Yo, 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 what it do, what it do? Hey, we know you should saw that fresh new intro. Wasn't that shit sick? Well, we couldn't agree more, guys. Right, we just collaborated with our boy Omar at Sun City Vibes to help create an intro that would take our podcast to the next level. Do you need help with your video editing and content creation to help elevate your business to the next level? Well, Sun City Vibes has you covered without a doubt. Yeah, that's right, guys. Whether it's a logo reveal, a music video, drone footage, or even t-shirt printing, guys, hit up Sun City Vibes for quality work and affordable price. Shit, Omar even made us a sick ass hat. Look at this. It's a fresh Fresh. ass hat. Fresh. Shit's fresh. Fresh. So yeah, guys, go help support those that support us and hit up our boy Omar and tell him Chris and Misa sent you from the podcast and help support a local El Paso business today. Let's go. Three, two, one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Conversing with Chris and Misa, the podcast. As always, guys, co-host of the podcast, Mr. Misael is here with, with, with us. Say what's up to the podcast, man. Yo, yo, yo. What it do? What it do? What it do? <laughs> In the producer chair, we got Amanda. She's back. Say what's up to the podcast. What's up, everyone? Happy New Year. Glad hey. to be back. For episode 163, we got a very, very special guest. His mis- his name is Mr. Joey Mungle of El Paso Disco Band. Funky Mungle in the building. Say what's up to the podcast. He still said it wrong. I knew I was going to. <laughs> Funky Mungle. Mungle, Mungle, Mungle. Mungle. <laughs> yeah. okay. Say what's up to the podcast, Joey. Uh, how you doing, man? Give how you doing, a- Tom? Give him a triple horn, Misa. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm doing yes. good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. Thank you for being here, Mr. Joey. We, re- we really do appreciate it. Uh, Misa slid in your DMs, and uh, a few days later, you're here with us. So thank, thank you for hey, that. Thanks to, uh, to Iggy, man. He's yeah. all like, hey, man, you guys want to have another bald dude on your pod? Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> you sent me all your info, and I was like, oh, I got up. a haircut this morning just so I look presentable. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you. You had hair this morning? <laughs> the, the left side, left, oh. left hair. I just so, trying to. So shout out to Iggy. Give him a round of applause. Yes. Thank Iggy. you, Iggy, for the, the, the plug. Mm-hmm. The interview plug. We really do appreciate right on, that. I said we got down. our boy fucking uh, Chewy from Next Gen Sports. He's in the building. Uh, so thanks to Chewy for being here today. Guys, for episode 163, we got a good episode for you all. We're going to get into uh, the story of Fungi Mungle, Mr. Joey, how he got uh, a, a bunch of people together, started this band, and they, they've been like probably one of the most f- famous bands here in El Paso since 1996 is when you guys started so we'll get it we'll get into all that uh, before that guys we have a tradition on this motherfucker it's called the cracking of the celebratory beer and it sounds like this cheers to y'all cheers to everybody cheers, listening cheers. uh thank you all for subscribing make sure you like us on facebook follow us on instagram subscribe to our youtube channel i'm gonna indulge Viva la raza! oh and he's done Somebody cut Fuck. Off. First beer of the day, dude. Jeez. Jeez. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Joey, so thank you for being here again. Uh, for people who may not know who you are, Did go you call ahead him Johnny? <laughs> Joey. Oh, oh, yeah. he, called heard me, Johnny. He's called, he said Baldy. Oh, <laughs> I <did> Baldy. <laughs> Introduce <laughs> yourself to the podcast audience who may not know who you I are. I'm Joey Sanchez from El Paso, Texas. And I've um, uh, been here since 1965. Born and raised. Oh, yeah, dude. Nice. Yes. Burgess. So you, Burgess, whatever. you went to Burgess. Uh, yeah, Burgess. It's even worse. I went to Cathedral too. Oh fuck! Oh, That's oh, cathedral. I went to Cathedral for a month. For a month. Did they kick you out? I left. <laughs> he kicked himself out. He said, "Fuck <laughs> it." That was like horrible. He's like, "Where are the chicks at?" Why didn't you like uh, Cathedral? <laughs> uh, it for the obvious dude, reasons. There was like some. I, I went there. It was just a violent place to be. So I was just like, "I'm not." I told my mom, "I'm not going back tomorrow. I don't care what." <laughs> and that was what, like mid eighties? Uh, yeah, eighty. So it would have been nineteen eighty. Okay, nineteen eighty. Yeah. Damn, dude, that's crazy. You graduated Burgess for in what year? Eighty three and a half. Eighty three and a half. Mm-hmm. Okay. I liked it so much. I stayed an extra semester. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, dude. That's crazy. So when did like? When is it that you started getting into music? Was that before? Like, oh yeah, I was like a 14, 14. We started. I started playing in bars when I was fourteen years old. Holy shit. Dude, what is, what's up with all these DJs like I guess being allowed in bars was, at like 13, 14 years old? It was okay back old. then. Oh, yeah. What I'm thinking about is where are the moms in here? <laughs> yeah. like, what? They're, they're right there. Mom they're, they're chaperoning. <laughs> um, if you're the talent, they'll let you in to play because you're working. Right. right. So I was the talent. And I remember the first time somebody said the talent and I thought, like, 
I'm a prostitute? That's weird. <laughs> I'm the talent. I ain't got no motherfucking talent. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how to sing here, man. I can't even tell ah, my shoes, man. I can't even remember the words. Yeah. You know, I've been making up words since 1965. <laughs> so. So back then, uh, when you started doing these, uh, the, you know, at bars, what, what kind of music were you playing? We were a heavy metal band. Just a heavy yeah, metal like band? like Judas Priest, and Iron Maiden, stuff like that. Sure. Yep. And that was what you were into, like, growing up as a kid? That was, like, the still music am, you would I'm listen like, to? Ah! <laughs> you know? You're a metal you head head like, I like, I like, like to go to Taco Command and go, I want some tacos! <laughs> hey. Ah, they're like, este loco. Here he is <laughs> again. Que con este. Hablando con policía, that shit's funny dude so yeah so that so that's the music that you were into and then what made you like want to start a band you just like always thought you would be like a singer one day well um uh see my parents owned a boot company and we were kind of well to do and uh so the guys around the neighborhood weren't as well to do they weren't poor but uh, you know i grew up in sila vista peasants yeah no well <laughs> the peasants would come around <laughs> gather around now look gather at my around. toys look at my toys kiss my ring <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly and you could join my band <laughs> yeah, no no and so uh, i could kind of sing they could kind of see that i had like the you know the mechanics and the the personality to be like the David Lee Roth, right and uh, so uh, they were like hey joey and then they knew my parents could afford a pa and so they're like, let's get Joey to sing. Because they needed a PA. And that was really, that was it. Was the only reason my parents could afford to pay, buy a PA. And then so, here's the funny story behind that. So my mom, we went and bought a PA from this dude, right? And it's back then, PAs were way different than what they are nowadays. You know, these are the big boxes and you had to carry them around. And my mom gave us $600 to buy this PA, right? PA. And my guitarist friend he's like talks me into buying a pound of pot with it right <laughs> what and he's like we'll double friend. our money man we'll double our money so we bought a pound of pot and we smoked the whole freaking thing <laughs> and i never paid the guy for the pa <laughs> that was it and so my the one day the dude comes knocking <laughs> I tell you, the dude comes knocking on the door and he tells my mom hey i need to pick up the pa she's well i gave you the money for it and he's no you gave me half of it and he owes me three hundred dollars, and um, so she gave me three hundred, I guess. And and she's like, no, no, no. Jo she's Joey. What's going on? This guy says you owe him three hundred bucks for the PA. I thought I'd give you the money. I was like, uh, I spent the money, mom. And of course she you know, she, she, she dug me. Joey's out. like, it, what money, mom? <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever find out you spent that money no, on, not on a pot? No, <laughs> not even till this day. No, no. <laughs> Santa Maria. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I mean, it's not like she'd get mad at you, right? She'd probably be like, oh, I understand, mijo. Like hey, it's hey, okay. Hey. You wanted to get high with hey, your friends. She's dead. Oh fuck! Oh. <laughs> just, <laughs> just put a fucking dagger in it. <laughs> oh, my mom! You bring her up? <laughs> no, anyway. Um, yeah. So she like, like, don't do it again. I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> just a slap on the wrist. And, and yeah, we paid the PA. We had the PA and whatever. You know, stupid. <laughs> so it, when you when you were like a little, like, what do you remember, like the El Paso music scene being like, like when you were 14, 15 years old? Oh, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of bands. We all played the same music, so you kind of could be interchangeable with a lot of bands because everybody right. played. Uh, you know, Hellbent for Leather and stuff like that. At least the groups that we, we were around. And not, even at the bars, man, everybody, we kind of all, so like if we played together, we'd be like, okay, we did look at each other's list, like don't play this, don't play that. And then there's always like those new wave bands, but you didn't take them serious. They're just like, so, ugh, it's horrible. They'll be gone in a month. No, they lasted. No, they they still around, actually. Yeah, still, you, know, you, ever, you ever been to Club 101? <laughs> oh, God, those people are still there. Like, um, But then again, yeah, I play in a disco band, so I can't really speak too much of it. But, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it was, but it was fun. We had a good time. Everybody was an alcoholic. Everybody's raging <laughs> alcoholics. And um, especially like my year of Burgess when I graduated. Jesus. He's like the creepy little weird dude. Over there. <laughs> he's just standing yeah. in like, the back. Like, he's like gremlin. Because I mean, you guys can't see there's a green It's because ever since you told him he needed a sign language, that's all he's been doing. <laughs> that's all he's been doing. He's that. doing gang signs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, my, my whole class, man. If everybody from Burgess and that cl class of 83. Oh, man. You guys could pound beers. They all still done. can. They still I, can. Everybody, like, <laughs> they, we have, like, these reunions. Not a high school reunion, but we'll get together reunions. Those dudes just drink and drink. And I'm like, I drink a lot, but those guys drink a lot. Yeah. And they're still like that. I'm like, oh, my God. You know? <laughs> Any specific memory that you have of back then that you will never forget or that stands out? There's a lot, man. We, cause we played every weekend. We used to play backyard parties. One time we stole this um, big metal um, uh, 
cross from a church from an Episcopal <laughs> church. Right? Oh my God. But it was a big metal one. I didn't steal it. The bass player did. And we'll, we'll talk about that guy in a minute. But the bass player and the and the guitarist, yeah. And so um they took it, but it, it weighed like, I don't know, a good 70 pounds. God pretty, bless. pretty heavy, right? And we were playing this backyard party. And uh, so we had the cross and we'd put these candles all over it because it was Ozzy Osbourne. You yeah, know, going, yeah, yeah. Ah! You're just playing uh, Diary of a Madman and stuff like that. That album was out at the time. Uh, I think we were playing uh, Crazy Train or whatever. Anyway, so the intro, we had an intro and we come out and the cross is there. And then so we we're going to put it behind the drummer on the on a rock wall, right? In the backyard party. And, and then the drummer's like, test it. No, I'm not going out there, man. No, I ain't going to do it. And we're like, come on, dude, don't be, don't be a wussy. Come on. And we had fire. We, we did pyrotechnic, pyro techniques, right? At the yeah. time. We, had, we had fireworks and stuff. So we lit the firework. We tested it in the day. Sure enough, song, bam, right in the snare. <laughs> you can, snare. you can see you guys. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a good thing you were sitting there, man. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, because you said the city was like 70 pounds, right? Yeah, wait a little. Yeah, it was, it, was, oh, you know, it was a big, it was a metal cross about that. Like if he was standing right here. Right. This yeah. one they put on top of a church or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where they stole it from or whatever. <laughs> it's the top oh, of the church, the, dude. Well, they were doing it for God, right? He asked them to. <laughs> we're, we're delivering God's heaven right. metal message to the he world. He spoke to me and I, I had to steal this that's fucking it. cross. Yeah, that's why it fell on that's me. Before, yeah. before they started joey god said like, uh, no not today <laughs> joey's like y'all have time to talk about a lord and savior jesus christ well you know and the, uh, the thing about those days is you know they wouldn't they didn't have money for you so they'd say you can drink all the beer you want and you know this is the 80s right keg parties i don't even know you can get kegs anymore right there used to be a place uh, the, remember the keg place on alameda <clears throat> and uh so, uh you know we'd say like, oh it's great you know it sounds great and after the two or three parties you figure out the kegs me floating by the time we finished playing, so we never got to drink any beer. So <laughs> technically, we never got paid. Damn! But we just did it. You know, I just, I just, it's, it's a like, it's a passion. It's like I always like when I see parents like, what do we, you know? My son wants to be a musician. What, what uh, advice do you give? I said, it's a freaking disease. And my advice is get him to law school or something. <laughs> yeah, go to law school. <laughs> yeah, don't give him six hundred dollars. Just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> because it's you know, it really is it's a disease and that's i don't you know was it like uh popular to be like in bands back then like was, were you guys like considered like like the cool crowd or was that still more of like the football team and stuff oh my god joey let me suck your dick joey. <laughs> right here <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast meal? um well it was pretty good you get a lot of yeah. bitches. That's what I'm asking, really. <laughs> <laughs> the real that's question. Layers, that's the real yeah. question. Like I threw a layer of frosting over it real fast, but then we're now into the real fucking meat of it. Uh, <laughs> getting down to the needy. I had some here. fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, I never wore a condom. <laughs> Let's just say I got grandkids older than you guys. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Yeah, that's cool though. But I mean, so what attracted you to like being in a band? Like it was it just, oh, it just all the beer and the bitches, dude. What are you talking about? You know, it was you know, um, it was just fun. I mean, I was like, so when I was a kid, when I was like ten years old, um, my mom you know, there was this place called Helena Troy Wigs, right at the mall. Which Helena Troy? That's how they right. started. They were just a wig shop. It's Holy shit! I didn't know that. That's I didn't know crazy. That. And then started they, from the bottom. Yep. And then they expanded to like spandex pants too. They had, so we'd get our, our our spandex pants from Helena Troy. But that's a different story. Anyway, so my mom used to have um, <laughs> wigs, right? You She'd guys go try them on? No, we just go buy them. Yeah, these, oh, okay. One time I had some ones that looked crystals down the side. They were badass. I had those leopard ones. I had zebra ones. I had, dude, I had all of them. I had every 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 color they had because we rock out on stage. And one time we were playing in Horizon, right? And we were like, uh, there's a, some bar in Horizon. And so um, the, <laughs> the, my bass player and we were going to you know, the restroom, had to pee. And some guys all... Um, what did the guy told you? He's like, hey, look at them faggots and them bears. Blah, blah, blah. He's talking like that. And the bass player turns around. He's all, how do you like to those faggots kick your ass? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that. What's funny about that is we'll talk about that guy in a minute. But uh, anyway, so anyway, my mom used to buy these wigs from Helena Troy. And um, uh, I'd put them on and jump on the bed at 10 years old and just jump like I'm singing. I don't know. And I just, that's the like earliest memory I ever had of like, just always wanted to be a performer, you know? And, um, so when that opportunity came to be in a band, it just hit. And then, you know, um, from, so we, the first band was called Megaton 
and we went and recorded some stuff. But we never, never did anything with the recordings. It was a stupid thing. And we never really toured or anything like that. So we never really progressed. And then after that, like right after high school, I was in a band called Tokyo Rose, which was actually really popular. We opened up for like everybody. I mean, we opened for Metallica. We opened for um, Rat at the this place called Big Apple, which is on the east side of town, which is where, what's there now? Um, it's on uh, Yarbrough and I-10, the south side corner. Anyway, um, so we used to play there. And it used to be a cool place. They had like, but anyway, they, they, they brought all these like heavy metal bands. And so we were opening act. And then we actually sold it out one night. And it was like 4,000 tickets. So we were pretty popular. We had, you know, everybody in El Paso knew who Tokyo Rose was at that time. Of course, El Paso was a whole different city from it is now, you know. I remember I saw t-shirts and stuff and just like, bam, 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 bam. And then everybody graduated. Everyone went in different directions. And, you know, people left. And uh, I, I started another band called, um, that was uh, Jet Screamer with uh, my drummer right now. Um, and this is a funny story too. <clears throat> Since we're talking about this stuff. Um, so the first time I met these guys, you ever heard of, you know who F Freddie Abraham is? The Abrahams? You've heard of the Abrahams, right? Uh, Sid Abraham was like a super famous lawyer in El Paso, right? Okay. And this is back in the time when like uh, uh, Pat O'Rourke and all these people, mm -hmm. right? All these dirty judges that were cleansing money and doing all that drug money. Well, Sid Abraham was their lawyer, right? He was the guy. Him and the O'Rourke's, O'Rourke's were in cahoots with each other getting all these drug dealers off and, <laughs> and laundering money way back then. And I hope, you know, I don't get sued for this. But anyway, <laughs> so anyway, one of his sons, Freddie Abraham, which he was older. He's a little bit older than me. He was in a band with uh, my drummer and some of uh, these two other guys. And I saw an ad at um, Danny's Music Box and said, hey, I'm um, looking for a singer. And so sure, I go and, uh, you know, we'd do the audition. And we're all like, yeah, let's do this together. We were really kind of hit it off. And just about then, Freddie Abraham walks in with his dad. And this is on the 14th floor of the Texas building downtown is where we used to rehearse. You know, that's right across from Plaza. They're about to start renovating it. And that's one of the buildings they're going to start renovating. Anyway, we're rehearsing there. And then he walks in. And then Freddie's up. Jimmy. Jamie. Oh, I forgot this again. Oh, Aaron. How could you do this? How could you do this? This is my band. What are you doing? It? And, then the, and then the father walks in. He was an old dude like... I don't know. He was like, I don't know how old he was, but he was old, you know? And these are like mafioso type people. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, hey, how could you do this to my son after everything I've done for you? It's like fucking Godfather. Yeah, and I'm right yeah, here, yeah. like, I just, you know, what, what I walk into. And, and, and he's like, you know what? He's like, fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. You know what? I'm going to buy him a better band. I'm going to buy him a better band. Fuck you guys. And I said, excuse me, sir. And I just walked in, okay? <laughs> you know, nobody knows who I am. And I was like, excuse me, sir. He's like, what? I said, hey, don't buy him a band. Buy him a violin. <laughs> Everybody looks like, oh my God. Like, and he's like, who's the guy? Who's this fucker? Who is this guy? And they're like, oh, the place is going crazy. And like, oh, I'm Joey Sanchez. Glad to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And like, everybody, they laughed. And I was like, dude, I can't believe you did that. And then I wish so, my parents could buy me a band. Yeah. That's funny. He was like, I'll just buy you another band. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Like, I was not cokers. entitled. They're all right. cokers. Yeah. That's crazy. He, he went to confront the band with his dad. I, yeah, he his dad exactly. with him. I got a lawyer. He's also my dad. <laughs> so, how long after that did, like, you. Did, so, did you start Fungi Mungle? Yeah. And how long ago was that after, at that point? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh,. So Jet Screamer recorded a bunch of stuff and um, we wanted to be big rock stars and we we're going to be rock stars. We we're going to be big rock stars. And then, uh, so at the time I was, uh, my boot company, uh, Kaboots, um, we were selling. Okay. So here's another story. Let's go before that. Okay. So we're going to back up. Rewind and show. Okay. So, uh, Kaboots, uh, we, uh, my wife and I started Kaboots in 1985. Right. And about that time, the Scorpions came to town. It was even before that. Mijo. <laughs> and right about that time, uh, the Scorpions came to town. My dad's all, hey, Joey, let's go sell boots to the Scorpions. And I was like, I'm like, what? Dad, you can't even get backstage. It's stupid. You know, there's so much security and all this shit. And this ain't going to happen. Come on. Let's go. So we go. We go backstage. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So my son loves heavy metal. And he wants to sell boots to the band. And they said, we'll go talk to production. So we go to production. They're like, oh, just leave your number. We'll let the band know. Well, damn it, the call, band called, right? And so um, 
we came back. We had to go selling boots to me a persona or back there selling boots to the scorpions. We we had these really boring boots at the time. It's like really basic shit. And they all buy boots, right? Well, it just turns out they just got back from that tour when they went to Russia. Remember when they did that thing in Russia? They were like, ah, it's the lead to the chains thing, ma, 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 all that stuff. So um, they put us in their little black book. Their publicist happened to be in town that particular day. And so she like told everybody. So for like almost a decade, every rock band that came to town called me up and bought boots for me, right? And so we'd go backstage, we'd go to LA, we'd go to all these parties. And Paul Stanley, and she's like, you gotta meet Paul Stanley, you gotta meet Paul Stanley. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I've never been a Kiss fan, it was the funniest thing, but she's like, it's Paul Stanley. Everybody talks like it's Paul Stanley. I'm like, it's fucking Paul Stanley. <laughs> so Paul Stanley calls me, he's like, hey, so what's going on? Hey, yeah, so they say you've got some really great boots on, and I saw the pictures of it. I was wondering, you like me, next time you come to LA, give me a call, and I'll pick you up in the airport, okay? I'm like, okay, so I'll, <laughs> I'll be there like in a week. Okay, okay, great, yeah, but don't call it, just come, come, let me pick you up. And I said, okay. So I go to the airport and fucking Paul Stanley comes to the airport, picks me up in his little Jeep and like, and he's like, hey, we're gonna go to see, meet some of my friends. And so uh, before you know it, like we're at all these parties and getting, and he's, he's just like taking like shares right there and like all these <laughs> fucking shares. <laughs> I mean, everybody, right? And I'm just like this kid from El Paso selling boots. Selling boots and shit. Yeah, and so uh, to make a long story longer, um, I, I had a tape and I was like, you know, I wanted to be a rock star, right? And so I was going to be a rock star. And I'm like, Paul Stanley is showing my tape. And we had just gone into uh, El Adobe, which is now, what do they call that? They changed the name to Sonic Ranch, right? At the time it was El Adobe. We had recorded this, like, this four, three song demo, which was really good. It's really badass. I, sh I should have brought it so you can hear it. So we can just sit here and listen to it. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, Paul listens to it and he's all, well, that's really good. You know, you could, you could do make it in this business if you wanted to, but, but you got to understand you're up against like Kiss and you're up against Def Leppard and you're up against all these other bands. So if you can't do that, if you don't feel that you can do that, you probably shouldn't get in there because it's a really hard life. But I'm telling you something. If I was you and I had a boot company, I wouldn't be a musician. So he's like discouraging you in a way, right? Fucker. <laughs> it's like what? In retrospect, you know, I could have been a dead heroin addict right now right yeah. you know thanks a lot paul <laughs> thank you for <laughs> saving my thanks. life these are the keeping boots me right alive you right? <laughs> know i came home to my wife and uh, we made children and had a great life <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck you paul <laughs> so that's that story uh, and so it's crazy though like he actually like listened to your tape because i'm sure like those guys would get people all the time like trying to show them like their music right he had a cassette he had a that, cassette dude. player in his car <laughs> Look those are him. some cool those are blades. sick dude Wild. yeah that is sick yeah and so <clears throat> so after that well, he called me he still calls me from time so you guys still have a relationship you kind of you know okay but he doesn't wear boots anymore because he like since ever since he broke his hip he's like you know he's a viejito okay he's like he's all like my my dad <laughs> <laughs> is he like the most famous person you've ever sold boots to uh i don't know I think uh, Bill Clinton's a little famouser. Uh, yeah, he's a lot more famous. <laughs> <I would say. laughs> yeah. You know, he was the president at one time. <laughs> yeah. Which ones were the most uh, favorite ones or the, your, the ones that you made? The ones I make for myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I tell you the truth, I'm not really big into selling rock stars and stuff. I mean, I, when I was in my 20s, I did a lot, but they're all just kind of a pain in the ass. Here's the Santana. celebrity customers. Oh, Robert player. Plant, dude. That's the guy. Shut that's up, the guy. Man, I don't take Zeppelin, pictures with anybody. Dude. There's one person I took a picture with, and that was Robert Plant and Bill Clinton. But uh, Robert Plant. Rick Payne. Nancy, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. Yeah, she I, just I, got fired. That's crazy. Oh, she <laughs> fired. That is so crazy. I, From I, one I, job. I posted this picture, and this is like, you know, I, I sell boots. So it's a lot of red hatters. Watch. I, I, journey yeah. or, or you know the, the well yeah you have rick perry on that list yeah rick perry's a really cool dude if you ever get to meet rick perry you're gonna be like that's one of the coolest people I've ever met in my life rick, and, ricardo perry and so that, like do these people like how so they all reached out to you or you like you would do a lot of reaching out to them or was it just a lot of word of mouth uh word of mouth okay and they would say hey like these are good quality I mean, it still, it still like, happens like every okay. day but, but i mean really the my favorite customers are just normal people because um, and this is a family business, right? That I'm fourth generation, yeah. yeah. Damn, dude, that's crazy. Wow. So that so it, it's been like when did the boot business? Dude, they start? got Jack Sparrow boots. Yeah, man, in the 
We made all the Pirates boots for the Pirates of the Caribbean, too. Wow. And Holy Disney. shit, that's crazy. Or if you go to Disneyland, those Jack Sparrow guys are wearing our boots. Damn. If you go, we did Cirque du Soleil stuff. Chris, you're not a boot guy, but would you wear those yeah. boots? Yeah, see, there's Priscilla. Why not? Hey, Priscilla. There's Joe. Look at, I, I swear to God, I see pictures of myself. I'm like, who is that? That's not me. Wait, who is that? Because uh, I, 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 I really do think I look like Brad Pitt. And then I see a picture <laughs> of myself. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. The Mexican Brad Pitt. Yeah, because, you know, I get mistaken for all the time. Right. You know, like, because, you know, people are like, oh my God, I thought you were Brad Pitt. <laughs> so, uh, so when did the boot company, when was it founded? Uh, 1928. So oh, here's what happened. Kind of, we, we found a picture Holy of shit. my great grandfather in their downtown El Paso, and there's a, it's a picture right, and all, there's a line of them. It's somewhere on our website, and and there's a line of them right, and they're all holding it. And then I was like, well, how did you, could you ever date that? Well, it was taken on a leap year. On a, on the picture was taken in February. In a leap year because oh, they have 29 okay. days, the right? 29th day, so or whatever. That's what yeah, we yeah. Out the year. And Damn, that's crazy. I know, right? It's insane. I mean, what are the odds of that? Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's cool. You know, it's, uh, I, I grew up around boots. My, my dad, um, he, my mom and dad had a boot factory, a big boot factory. They actually brought Justin boots and Nocona boots and all that manufacturing in El Paso. Um, were you kind of forced into the business? Like, it, it just, you know, that, that speech, that little conversation with Paul Stanley kind of, it's like my whole life has been like, I'm just like the most, I'm the, I'm the most blessed person that ever walked the face of the earth because I'm like, like my whole life. I've just, the phone never stopped ringing. Like right. even today, like people buy my boots every day from all over the world. Same thing with Fungi Mungal, you know, it's like, uh, so Fungi Mungal, we never got to the, answer that question, but, um, you know, we played the uh, letter festival in 1996, right? And we had only been together, um, maybe six months. Right. And it was already the second lineup at that point. And, and then we opened for the uh, village people, Donna summer and tower power that year. Right. And the phone hasn't stopped ringing since ever since then 1996. Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. That's dude. awesome, dude. That's crazy. And so who were your original band members at that point? <clears throat> um, so the very, very first, so this is what happened was we were, um, we were playing the stakeout and I had joined this one band called, um, uh, groove junkies or something like that. No, they're called Mystery. Yeah, they're called Mystery. But they were playing on Alameda, and I was like, dude, you got to change your name to E, Mister, because it's <laughs> Alameda. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I talked him into learning Get Down Tonight, and my original intention was to be a heavy metal disco band, two-guitar band, right? So I always, and I st still to this day, I'd love to do that. But um, so then um, they wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it, do it, and it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday or when there's nobody there and those gigs were like seven day a night gigs you know you played all week long for 50 bucks and and then sometimes your bar tab was bar tab was 150 bucks and you're like oh, man I owe them money but um so um I said but there was nobody there one night and I said like, come on man just just play this song nobody's here anyway and they wouldn't do it and finally they played <laughs> it and it was the weirdest thing because I don't know where all these people came from all of a sudden the dance floor just packed right like get down tonight People come out of the bathroom. I guess they're doing coke or whatever. But there's just like it was, it was. It was a really seedy bar, and so I was like, I looked at it like this is it. This is it. And we hadn't. You know, there was no costumes or anything yet. We were just still a heavy metal band. And then so this guy named Dave Cooper had a club called the Basement in downtown El Paso, and he kind of got wind of it. He's let's do it. And he that was that was the first lineup was um, we we did had some costumes there. And they were kind of rinky dink, but um, I still wear them. But um, and so it was Mario Jaramillo. He owns B17. Um, it was uh, Ruben. Ruben was Ruben's last name. He works at Benny's Pawn Shop. And uh, Orlando Levnos. Yeah. So there's three of us, and we kind of just did it. And, you know, what were we making? Like $200 a night, right? Woo! Yeah, big bucks. And so uh, then we played that for about a month or two, and then something happened. Everybody got in a fight. And then um, I was like, so that band broke up, but I knew I wanted to keep on going. And then there was this thing called Marlboro Festival here in El Paso. And I think Foreigner was playing that day. Doobie Brothers and Foreigners were playing that weekend. And this is how I'm, I know I'm old. I saw <laughs> kids. I saw all the original lineups of all these classic bands <laughs> that you love. Okay. I saw all the, Not the reunions. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the reunions too, but I, I, I saw the original lineups. Anyway, so um, I saw Foreigner Double Vision. That was like my fourth concert. I saw Thin Lizzy 
live. You guys don't even know who that is. I don't is. know who nope. Thin Lizzy is. <laughs> Foreigner, I, I, I know I got who it. that is. Come on, Thin Lizzy. <laughs> How about Kansas? <laughs> Have you ever heard of Kansas? Yes. Have you heard of Kansas? <laughs> I saw that. I saw uh, Carry On, Our Wayward Son tour. Whatever was the Thin Lizzy, man. Tonight is going to be a jailbreak. Tonight is going to be a jailbreak. I no. thought you would know all these bands, me. So this is like right mm. up here for like Carry On. Here's like the uh, largest, uh, biggest guy from Ireland ever. Biggest rock star from Ireland. And I know you guys have been Ireland. I can tell from your Irish <laughs> accent and the Guinness that you brought me. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, what was I talking about? So you were, so essentially like you guys, you start the band, you get in a fight, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then uh, foreigners then, in town. Foreigners were yeah. playing. And then so then I had, I, during uh, one of my hi- hiatuses from singing in bands, there was this band called uh, Max Alley. Max Alley. And they played at Sasso's. Remember Sasso's? No, you don't. No. <laughs> but Sasso's was this live club and those bands have played heavy metal all, all, all week long, right? And so, but these bands, their singers would blow their voices out like midweek so they somebody calling you for some boots and shit right now no it's my nephew <laughs> um they'd, they'd blow their so they'd call me up and say hey joey our singer blew his throat out can you come do the weekend and i'd get the cherry gig right and you know we we're doing deep purple or whatever and i'd say just pay me a crown just buy me crown because you know and so so anyway uh, uh joe and sweat though was in that band and and so i so anyway that at that foreigner concert I put the band together. I just saw all these musicians were there and I was like, Hey, I'm doing this thing. You want to do it? Everybody's like, yeah. So we rehearsed the next week and we're, when are we going to play? And I said, well, I already booked next week. And so we started playing this club called Bombardiers, which is over here on the West side. It's not there anymore. All these places are gone. You gotta understand. <laughs> I bought a new, we bought a new city. <laughs> and, um, so we played at Bombardiers a lot and it's kind of developed that and that's where we kind of that and then we started doing papas and then papas put a lot of money into our name because they've had our name on the radio every single day for like i don't know a long time that's when that was on mesa right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. papas that was in about 90 Amanda remembers the 97 97 what you guys were i was born in 91 i was nine I was, years old i was born in oh, 90 yeah well our name was on the radio every day back then like all the time and just really built the brand you know and um then that band kind of fell apart we were playing the, the you know it's kind of starting to make money and doing his thing and then it fell apart and then i got kicked out um or either, it's a different story some people say i left some people say uh, whatever but you know i gotta remember i'm triple ADD, so i can't remember a damn thing <laughs> and so then i kind of did a swing band for a little bit and then um we got hired for the amigo air show oh okay. shit i remember when they yeah. used to do that shit and they yeah, did a, we were on the billboard and everything right and we were on the billboard and i was i had this um, super dave osborne outfit that i was on the billboard with and um uh this terrible thing happened 9 11 and the, the thing never happened they canceled it right so at the time we were gonna car so i was a jet screamer because you know i just didn't want to do funky mongol again i wanted to break from it and uh because before that we were playing like seven nights no no five nights a week i was and that was the only i was doing it all you know so i just needed kind of a break from it and then um so we started playing as jet screamer and doing some gigs now we had, man, that was a good lineup man i had this guy uh, brian love brian love actually he's uh with um jason aldean right now he's uh, what yeah. yeah that is crazy and then um we had this uh, tokyo rose the keyboard player he is um um What's the name of that? Um, Uncle Cracker. He's a keyboard player, with Uncle Cracker. And um, there's a lot of people out of fun. You know, from, uh, there's another guy. Uh, you ever heard of Cigarettes After Sex? I've never heard of that. No, well, I mean, like, I know it's like a theme, yeah. right? But like, yeah, no. but it's a band called Cigarettes. They're pretty big. And that guy was a, a bass player in my band, too. Remember that Funky Mongo? So a lot of those guys, they branched, eventually branched out. and They and, took it serious. Right. And then they, and they took it to the next level. You see, yeah. I stayed here at my family and did this stupid boot thing that Paul Stanley talked me into. It's like the university of like fucking bands. It's like you go there to learn and then you go out there and you find something good. I could have been an actor, but I wound up here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, then uh, my friend Jamie, who had been in Jet Screamer, um, he got divorced and he's like kind of bummed and I was looking for a drummer and then uh, Dave Hamilton, I saw him at a baseball game and um, Diablo and he came up to me and he said, Dave Hamilton's really cool because he's like this, he's like SpongeBob, right? He's the eternally happy and lucky, go lucky guy, right? Hey, Joey, how you doing? I just got a job, 17,000 a year. Wow. 
thanks, Dave. That's hey, are you playing bass with anybody? And so we like everybody's like it was kind of funny when I was putting the band together that second time or that third time. Um, musicians had a version to putting costumes on because that was selling out. They prefer to make fifty dollars a night instead of a thousand dollars a night, right? But that's your choice. And so, um, so we got Dave Hamilton, Jamie. And that's like our, you know, drummer, bass player. And Jamie, drummer, Jamie. I don't know if you ever seen him, but man, the dude's freaking solid. He's a metronome, and he's he's John Bonham. He's just, you know, it's like total balls to the wall. I'm gonna blow up your head right now, type drummer. You know, the perfect drummer. And but he's solid. So he's not he's not frilly. He doesn't do all this other crap. He just and then Dave is like uh, Brothers Johnson, which I know you guys don't know who that is, but uh, you've ever heard of a guy named Michael Jackson? <laughs> yeah. You ever heard a song called Thriller? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Never bad. With the most Brothers Johnson, the, the bass player from Brothers Johnson, he did all that stuff. All that stuff, all those super big hits. He was like the guy. Like He's the disco, that slappy guy. Okay. So Dave's like that. He's like Brothers Johnson, like badass, right? And then he's like, you know, he's musically trained. He went to to college for it. And then we had a succession of guitarists and we had keyboard player Cody Ritchie. Cody was really cool too. He, he actually played in Broadway and um, he, like his first call when all these shows come to town, they, they call him to do that. He's a, a, a theater teacher at um, um, one of these schools. <laughs> and, um, but so everybody's formally trained, right? Everybody's got a musical background. I'm the only one that didn't uh, really go to school. And um, Yeah, dude, school's for fools. School for fool. <sighs> all these people with their... Retirement packages, <laughs> oh, loser, <laughs> you should be like me, <laughs> suffering to the day you die. And well, dude, what they say, like, once you stop working, you die. So it's like, dude, fuck uh, it, dude. Uh, I work all, all my life. You know what? I'm tired of working. I'm going to die. I don't care. <laughs> I ain't got no problem with death right now, boy. <laughs> so um, then we, is, this, is my story too long? Am I boring you? Is everybody going, oh, this no, you're, it's, no, 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 it's no, really no. interesting. You're good. This We're about to get to the good part here. I can feel it. sucks. <laughs> hey, shut up. <laughs> so uh, then uh, we had all these guitarists, man. And guitarists are like two-year-olds they're just like <laughs> they go running off and you're like stop stop don't you can you broke it put you that down you broke it <laughs> why'd you break it so anyway we finally we kind of got this guy gil mata and he's like a five-year-old but he's pretty good and but man the dude's like you know he, but he's like so musically good you know and he came into the band and just started just cleaning everything up and just i mean it was just the band just became brilliant when that guy came in and like these guys have been in the band like 20 years now you know what i mean so it's like it's a solid group and i uh, sometimes i sit there and like how did this happen man right like these how did i get this level of musician in this band because the first lineup was i mean they're good but they weren't that good right and uh now it's just it's just fun you know we, we only do like maybe 10 20 gigs a year I mean, we'd do more, but it's just we're kind of <laughs> kind of too expensive for the market to do a lot of gigs. But um, it's I, you know, it's it's fun because it's kind of gotten to the point where like, okay, I, I here's what band costs and here's what production costs. Right. And so um, I want extra lighting and I want it's extra staging elements and I so we'll start start thinking of other things, you know. But uh, the the verse, the opposite side of that is like, you know, other bands show up, they got drum set an amp and they can play but no i have to have a crew of people and it's like all this stuff and it's just like oh why did i you know sometimes it's a pain in the ass but you know it's it's, it's you it's still like, enjoy it oh no yeah that's the only reason you do it is because it's like it's so fun you know and i was like it's my moment to feel like i'm mick jagger you know? yeah 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 and that's it like i want to feel like i'm mick jagger and i know, mick jagger I know i'm not still mick alive jagger. dude yeah. mick jagger is still going hard <laughs> I bought them another band. <laughs> <laughs> I bought him. I bought him a new life. Well, Mick Jagger, you know, he's Satan, right? You know, like, <laughs> he's Satan. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to pop you. Nice to meet you. Name. Hope you get my name. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I love Jagger, man. I've seen the Stones a bunch of times, and I love Stones. And so Can you that, move like Mick Jagger? Some people say I'm a Mexican Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> La madre. The Mexican Jagger. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, can do Jagger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love doing Jagger. That's a lot of it's a lot of energy, man. You want to do Jagger right? Ooh, you gotta lose this belly. 
You gotta put those beers down. Yeah, a lot, a lot of cocaine. Nick, don't drink this. Yeah, yeah. He drinks straight fucking gasoline. <laughs> straight diesel. True, true. Straight diesel <laughs> to the face. Hey, Keith. Keith. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So at that at that point is like, when do you guys like switch your direction of like music genre to like disco? Oh, that was 1995. 95. And is, do you did you see like a change in like? The way that your band was perceived when you do, oh, guys yeah. did that? Yeah, that's what I said. We got that gig. We opened for Donna Summer, and his phone just never stopped ringing. And pretty much you could just, um, you could ask whatever money you wanted. It was crazy. Like, this, like, and like right now, it's, pay, it's crazy. Right? It's like, how much you guys? And I, I draw out a figure, and they're like, okay. Like, could have fucking done more. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? You think, uh, you, you think uh, I could have done more? Just start high, man. I do. But sometimes, you know. And then you start super high and they're like, all right. You're like, fuck. But then, you know, I, I don't know why, but I got this conscience and I hate it because it's like. It's because you spent that month at Cathedral. Don't rip them off. Oh, no. <laughs> I, 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 my parents sentenced me to five years of Catholic school. <laughs> fuck. Uh, that's I, a I terrible went to St. Joseph's. St. Joe's. Like, what would Jesus do? What Joey do? Yeah. <laughs> what, what what Joey do? And then so when do you when do you uh, when do you guys start touring like na like nationally and when do you guys start doing shows like everybody got real jobs so it's tough. I'd like to play more out of town stuff, but it's tough. I mean, our our drummer just opened a brewery in Rio Dosa. Right, I was reading about that. Yeah, it's so really good. It's yeah, that sounds shift. cool. It's cool. So we'll be playing there a couple. Of we just played there for years. And um, you guys do a lot of like covers and stuff like that. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, technically, there are songs. It's our songs, but those other bands played it before us. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are you songs. There are songs. Those yeah. guys, we, we play them better. Those, yeah, well, we, you know, <laughs> tell you the truth. Yeah. Some, I'll tell you, we do play some songs better yeah. than a lot of those bands. Yeah, and it's crazy because you guys have done, like, every possible gig here in El Paso, like, fucking Music Under the Stars. Yeah, You guys cool. have played, like, at the Sun Bowl for, like, the Sun Bowl halftime show. That was fun. Uh, what is What was, like, your, that one, like, uh, performance where you were, like, oh, we just fucking absolutely killed it that day? Every single time. No, um. <laughs> every single one, bro. <laughs> we never miss. <laughs> you know what? Uh, there's a couple of times we miss, but we don't miss it much. But, um, you sure. know, that, that show right there is a fun one. That's St. Mark's. It's awesome. Uh, that was the parade. That was fun. You ever done a parade? Parades are they're a trip. You only really need, like, you're, if you're playing, because we had, like, a generator. And you just need, like, five seconds of a song. Maybe ten seconds, because everybody's like, yay! Right, right. And then you you fucking go right And then you start over again. You walk two miles. And, <laughs> and we did the parade a couple of times. That was cool. Um, well, we, you know, when we do that uh, Alfresco Friday, that's kind of my favorite one. Because there's like 7,000 people show up and it's just crazy. It's just that's a sea a of people. Painting, man. And um, that's Jamie right there. The metal God. And, and he, he builds all his own drum sets. We used to call him Jamie Vila. He builds his own drum yeah. sets? Damn, Damn, that's crazy. Da, da, and they, they, they're on their own uh, platform and you can roll it around and he's got lights in them and it is just crazy. That is so cool. Yeah, he's amazing. Yeah, and, and what's crazy is like your guys is like, I'm not going to say like, I'll say you, you the, your guys' outfit when you guys perform. Like, uh, it's really like it takes you back to like a different time because you got the big fro hair. You got like fro game. the fro fucking. Fro game. I don't even know what to call the style, but it's like just like disco it, themed. You know, it kind of remind me of um, Veta Grand Fleet. Now it's heavy metal disco. Heavy yeah. metal disco. What a combination, huh? Who would have ever thought? <laughs> Our original tagline was disco with a twist. Because we are kind of heavy metal disco, <clears throat> but you know it's really just driving. You just driving. I like like driving. I mean, we play some. We play ACDC too, and then uh, we used to have this uh, joke. I'd say like, um, we're gonna play the number one disco song of all time, and we try and make people guess, and then we go into a Sweet Child of Mine. That, that, was the closer. that was a closer but every you know it's just a, one of those songs and everybody dancing. loves it's that like fucking dancing song a, or, or singing that dancing queen yeah we don't do that <laughs> yeah so what is like one of the so that, that's alfresco friday that picture that in the background right yeah, there it's okay so yeah it looks fun. lit it's oh, right crazy. at the convention center yeah yeah because it's just and there's people it's a sea of people and everybody's dancing look i see my mom now yep. <laughs> there's there's my grandma <laughs> So, do you think like uh, <laughs> you can be my daughter? You know that, right? Everybody, everybody in that crowd is is going to bed like at eight p.m. for sure that day. <laughs> well, yeah, not that day. <laughs> not that day. During the it's week, like, it's like eight thirty. Eight thirty. Eight thirty. They broke eight thirty that day. <laughs> <laughs> Mijo, let's go. Let's go before other people have to go. Let's get out of here. Yeah, dude, look at that shit. That yeah, that's the, that's hell, a dude. cool candy nights. That's a good one. That's always a fun one too. 
That's a good one. We spend a lot of money on production. Well, we try and spend money. I've got more money for production now. Right. We used to just pay it out of our pocket there. But now these, um, this last year, um, they started paying for it finally. But yeah, we're going to. And gonna, how hard is it for that? Like to negotiate for like stuff like that? Is it hard to like get people to like kind of buy in to, to helping you guys do all that? Or it was it's just not anymore. Of, Maybe. Well, so I kind of took over management of the band again uh, this last year. And the last guy, I mean, Jamie used to run it and he did a great job with it, but um, he wasn't like, he's not a negotiator type dude. Right. And so we, you know, we just kind of just like, this is our price. And now I'm just, I've just changed the whole concept and the way we book it is. He's like, I want this and this and I'll throw in a couple of boots. That's what I would do. do. <laughs> but I, 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 the like, I, I want, uh, <laughs> this is where a performance fee is. And then, and then this is where a writer is. And then this is for the production. And and then sometimes like I'll be like, but I want more. This is the minimal production we'll do, but I really want you to spend this much for production. And sometimes they'll do it. And they're like, right on. And that's what helps make the show, right? When yeah, you have all, all the that. lights and the smoke. Yeah. And like. and, and, but it's a, it's a double-edged sword because, I mean, not for us because we're not that big. Right. But you see bands, big bands come to town now, and it's all just lights. And just a bunch of old men like hidden behind lights. It's just like taking the whole rock and roll out of it. And that's just my opinion, you know what I mean? And I get it. It's production values and all that. But, you know, and like uh, the, everybody's lip syncing these days. And it's just like, you know, yeah, it's like they're it's not rock and roll. There's karaoke, no karaoke. Yeah. There's very few bands that are, that are rock and roll. And personally, I would rather just see a really basic light show and a good band. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you guys like take pride in, in being like, a band that actually fucking plays yeah. everything live. Like you guys don't dub your tracks. No. Uh, everything is like actually happening as you're performing, si, señorito. which is good. I, I really appreciate that because that's how you, you can put, kind of separate like the true musicians from like the ones that are kind of just like, yeah, yeah they, they can do it, but they're just kind of getting by. Yeah. And it's just boring. And like, uh, what's that band? Steel Panther. You ever seen Steel Panther? You know, Steel Panther. No. Yeah. <laughs> just every band <laughs> do you know who this is no nope. have you ever heard of Led Zeppelin <laughs> yes <laughs> fucking uh, still Panther that what? sounds like a superhero it's, 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 it's this comedy heavy metal band right? <laughs> fucking still Panther Steel Panther but holy like, shit everybody loves Steel Panther right yeah, they used yeah. to be a, a Van Halen uh, yeah that's what they look like yeah they yeah. do look like but that. now you gotta, they have, they're like a comical band like they have a song called uh, Asian Hookah and stuff like that just, <laughs> it's like it's really raunchy right humor, where are they right? from uh, Las Vegas Asian oh wait hooker. wait they, they play over on Fourmount Street right yeah sometimes yeah um, you've seen them before or what yeah, when, Street, yeah. I, I had I don't know if it was them but I remember I mean, they opened two for years ago. Judas Priest on one tour holy shit I mean, that's they, pretty they, crazy they, they, you know they, they do well but anyway they came to Speaking Rock and then Speaking Rock brings them every once in a while my drummer's like a super big fan of theirs and I'm like, I like them. They're, they're cute. They're comedy. They're very good. They're very good. They're very, very good musicians. Do you have, do you have like a modern band? Like, a, like, I guess like, you know, the band that's just been, you know, that came out maybe like 10 years ago that you're, you're very what are you trying to say? big fan of. What are you trying to say? Are you anyway, into any modern so, band? Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait <laughs> thing. And so they started, I could tell the dude was like lip syncing parts of it. And I was like, you're a track act. Right. You're a track act. And he's not a track act. He just did that. And like, if you use one track, Ever your track your track act, act. Yeah. yeah. You're just a track act. Yep. You know, you got to be able to do all that shit That's live, it. dude. And That's if you just... can't do it, then just do it a different way. I mean, you know, right. there's, I don't know, whatever, but you're a track act. Um, <laughs> last 10 years, like, I don't know, there's a lot of good bands. Uh, name some bands. Sure. Do, you, do you like <laughs> Misa Camp? No, no. Do you like the White Stripes? Yeah, I like White Stripes. Okay, the what Black about? Keys. Black Keys. I saw the that dude when he came to town. Dan uh, Arabic. The uh, White Stripes, dude. What's his name? Oh, Jack White. Yeah, he went to a concert. Did you see it? No, I he didn't. Came by God, it's yeah. cool, man. Are it you a badass fan stage. of the Strokes? Not really. I don't like the bass player. I really like the Strokes. They were like fucking badass when they came I never out. Liked, the only reason I didn't like them is their bass player is boring. Okay. Right. I hate boring bass players. What about uh, Modest Mouse? Yeah. Yeah. I think their drummer just she passed, passed yeah. away. Yeah. 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 So sad. A lot of drummers. Another drummer, the drummer from... Another drummer died the other day, too. Anyway, this day of the dead drummers. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy to see like how far you guys like have come and like the longevity of like the band. Well, you can change your name forever. I mean, because technically the bands broke up a bunch of times. Right. I could change names every time, but 
it's just stupid. Right. Yeah. You, you have to you build like, a brand. Right. You have to build a brand and it has to like start somewhere. What's the hardest part of like maintaining the relationships within a band, trying to keep everyone happy, trying to keep them all working towards like a common goal? It's like hurting cats. <laughs> yeah, fuck. <laughs> no. That's terrible. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, um, this is going to sound like um, stroking my ego, but when you get like a lot of really good gigs, you just, you just keep coming back because yeah. it's like it's like a heroin. It's like oh, oh yeah, I don't care if we get paid tonight. Let's go play it. Right, everyone everyone wants to be part of it. You know when they it's see fun. you doing something that it's big, fun. it's so. just fun. But I mean, I'm lucky because like um, nobody has an overzealous ego in this band. Nobody wants to be a rock star. You know, like they're all teachers. You know, um, oh, they, I didn't realize he put that up. Funny, um, but. Um, <laughs> uh you know it's like dave is uh he he has his church thing you know he does in church sunday he plays we used to call him the band whore because he plays with everybody <laughs> <laughs> but yeah he's like a worship leader right yeah worship leader okay. at one of those uh, kmart uh christian places <laughs> we got the blue light special jesus hey. jesus will save you at half price today. <laughs> half price today for every dollar you give it's a dollar for us <laughs> I told him he kind of looks like Jesus, and I said you ought to start your own church, like your own religion too, yeah. <laughs> like your own church fucking David, following. The, the yeah. bass playing Church of David. <laughs> the Church of David yeah. sounds super corrupt. By I will way. save his soul <laughs> from the bottom of my base. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. But um, yeah, he's got his thing, and he's come a on over to the funky church. That's it. Funk, 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 funk. <laughs> and he's a teacher at uh, Da Vinci. He does orchestra and all that stuff, and and Gills at. Um, um, he says Hanks. Hanks High School. He got Teacher of the Year. He's badass. Gil's so good. He's like such an amazing musician. Uh, Jamie's, you know, he, he, but he ain't going anywhere. And then um, <laughs> uh, Jamie, I mean, like, like we're not, what I'm saying is like nobody wants, you know, nobody has these aspirations to be like right. world famous right. musicians. Well, right. you, like you said, they kind of all got like, yeah, you got like, like real life. a real job. If I kind that, of that, that Paul Stanley speech from somebody. Right. You know, <laughs> Mijo, you speak us, you know, you could go do it, but you'll be a dead heroin addict. But, uh, mom just once uh jamie's got his he's got a print shop and he kind of did all the marketing for us forever uh so we just got the keyboard player uh, carlos Perez. i always call him charlie and it, uh, charlie carlos what's his freaking name what is his name anyway we call him c c boy his dad he says it right there his dad was freaking the violin player and vicente fernandez's band. holy shit like, forever he grew up and his dad was always touring is that crazy? So, oh, damn, that is crazy. And so, then his dad did the violin on all the Juan Gabriel albums too. So that's how he became such like a, maybe like such a good musician himself is like seeing like the way his dad. He, yeah, did. I mean, he, he plays dad, the harmonica, dude. Dude, he plays everything. He can play literally like every instrument. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I was the dude, just, Well, pretty much like all those dudes can do that, right? right. Any of those dudes could do anything, right. play any instrument, right? Even an instrument they never played before. Um, so, but Carlos, um, he. He's a badass dude. He's just he, he just he he sent me an Instagram thing uh, in June, and um, we, we'd been looking for keyboard players. And we had we auditioned people, and people said, "I got it down. I got it down. I got it down." Okay, well, come on, let's do the rehearsal. And they get to rehearsal, and they didn't know one song. I was like, "You're like, what the fuck, dude?" <laughs> Were they like hoping yeah. to fake it till they made it? I didn't. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> why would you do that? I know right, yeah. it's embarrassing. I would think. Well, if you're going and to they try out, embarrassed. They, if they're going to try part. out for a band, you would think they would already kind of know like what the band's going to play, and they would be yeah. know what's expected of them. So I was just like, so we finally kind of like, hey, we're not going to get a keyboard player. And then this dude sends me an Instagram, and I said, "Well, send me a thing. Send me a thing you playing somewhere." So you can tell just from playing. Sure enough, I'm like, oh, "That's a guy, man. I think this could be the guy." I said, well, let's do a rehearsal. And man, he, he, had, he had like 75% of the songs like ready to go. Yeah. And I said, good, because we're playing next week. We're doing Cool Canyon Nights. It's going to be your first gig. <laughs> cool He's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to be ready. I'm like, I don't care. We'll, ready or not, we'll, brother. We'll, we'll turn you down if we have to. But just, just, if you don't know parts, yeah. don't play them. Hey, and being a local band, um, and I'm sure you probably listen or have listened to other local bands. Is there right now a local band that you listen to that, that you could say that like, oh, man, these guys have something special going on? Yeah, I just don't know who. I like Sweet Nadine, but they're just a cover band. But freaking Leo from Sweet Nadine, oh my God, that guy's got, he's got the best voice I've ever heard in El Paso. He's amazing, just soulful. There's certain nights you just catch them, like they're playing, they're playing I mean, they play like this blues kind of mix of stuff, with songs you've never heard. And um, 
oh, what song was he playing the other night? It's just like, oh my God. You're just like, Jesus, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's that and band that uh, Anthony Austin found is on? The fucking three, uh, Feline. Feline Fox. It? Yeah, Feline, Feline Fox. Fox, yeah. I've seen them a couple times. They're good, yeah. They're good. Um, I don't know, there's a bunch, I don't know. My brain ain't thinking that right now, but... <laughs> Uh, can't think of any right now. But for sure, you 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 think that there's some some really good bands out there. There's right a now, lot but. of great musicians in El Paso. I think you know, and 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 then the smart ones leave and go, you know, die of heroin, <laughs> or they go play with fucking Jason Aldean and shit. Yeah, like, that's a pretty fucking big deal right there. Brian Love was amazing. He's amazing. He was there when that the shooting happened. He, he heard the bullets go over his head. Damn, sure. that, that's fucking wild. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah, dude, you have a very interesting story to say the least, for sure. I mean, obviously, all your time, you know, in music, being part of multiple bands and everything, like you really have like left like kind of like a legacy here I can do in El Paso. Too, like. <laughs> <laughs> Just as easy. <laughs> he's he's lived that whole like band life. Yeah, like, dude, you it's know, fucking like, crazy. Whatever. So I mean, right. I always go home to my home the thing yeah, I, and I, he's like, I, always I didn't just have to go, go to a hotel room you know right so yeah. he's like i always just start slinging boots in the morning first yeah. thing <laughs> <laughs> All right. these boots were made for rocking well, it's like some there would be days like because i was a scout master for uh boy scouts and then i'd have my scout master, <laughs> scout <outfit>. master. <laughs> and then i gotta go because i gotta go play a gig and then i go put my <laughs> suit on and then and then after that you know it's like uh, uh, somebody's coming in the morning to buy boots so i had to put my it's regular, just damn, this regular was I'm like I'm like Superman. Bro, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Scoutmaster. I don't think I've heard anybody fucking like brag about being a Scoutmaster in Boy Scouts. <laughs> like I think he's the funny. only one that's been 16, a I had yeah. 16 uh, Eagle Scouts. First fucking Scoutmaster ever on the pod. I was always <laughs> jealous that uh, uh, I was never part of the Eagle Scouts. Like I've seen so many movies and like you see these popular kids like, like oh Eagle Scouts or blah 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 or like I'd have friends dude just, you know like when in high school and like my these kids rich, and they're Chris like, was oh, yeah, in Boy Scouts Scout. for a little bit yeah and then I was like fuck this shit nah, dude. I <laughs> loved Girl Scouts if you have like a good weird. Scout master and he's not real militant and right. stuff it's fun. I mean some people like that militant thing I wasn't I, I was our goal was never like my kids are gonna join the army right or anything like that I mean that, there's nothing I, I you know people need to go in the army and right right that. right. I respect that, but that was never our thing. We were a bunch of um, overprivileged white people. Just wanted our children to have those values. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're coming up on 56 minutes here. We're going to do real fast. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, that way, if anyone needs to take a piss. Yeah, sure I need to take a does. shit, dude, actually. <laughs> uh, we'll take a quick break so we can do all that. When we come back, we're going to talk to Joey about uh, the future of Fungi Mungle, where he sees himself with the band going into the uh, into the next few years. I thought um, he had a fro, to be honest, dude. <laughs> well, well, My fro game. <laughs> we'll ask him about uh, his hair that he just got it cut off yesterday, so suspiciously. <laughs> <laughs> he should bring the hair out for the second yeah, half. Yeah, yeah, second half. <laughs> And we'll, we'll get into a few more topics here with Joey on the second half. So before we do that, guys, we're going to go ahead and shout out our sponsor. Shout out our boy Chewy from Next Gen Sports. He does all our merch. Our guy Omar at Sun City Vibes and our boy Aaron Lee at I and I Glass. Make sure you guys follow them on all social media platforms. Uh, Mr. Joey, do you are you on social media, Facebook, Instagram? Where could they follow you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, Kaboots, really, and Fungi Mungle. That's both of them have... Uh, the old old people uh, platform Facebook. <laughs> yes, that's where we found you. What actually? about the people that's that are still on MySpace? <laughs> yeah, no, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> your space, MySpace. I had a MySpace once for it was like so complicated. Did you ever do MySpace? Yeah, that was your top eight. Yeah, MySpace. Your top was eight. You can have a, you have oh. songs on there, but it was so hard to use. Yeah. You had to have like no coding and yeah, a little yeah, bit of like, that Aah! stuff. Yeah, dude, it was. My I still was have crazy. problems just using my iPhone. I felt like a true tech guy, like you know, like fucking yeah, building your MySpace yeah, dude, page like, and mm. shit. But yeah, you I were do coding that. software. Yeah. And shit. I have this. This is simple and it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that you say that you're twice as tantalizing as Beyonce and a thousand times more passionate than Celine Dion. <laughs> I don't like either of them. That. So oh, I love you, it. you don't like Celine Dion. I don't. What? That's, that's definitely criminal. not Beyonce. I mean, Beyonce, eh, but Celine Dion, that Titanic song? I mean, fuck. I wish I was as skinny as Celine Dion. So, Celiac Dion. <laughs> all right, so we're yeah, going to go. Be sure to check out all their stuff. A quick break here, episode 163, Conversing with Chris and Mace of the podcast. Make sure you guys like us on Facebook, Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
And uh, thank you once again, Mr. Joey, for being here today. We really do appreciate it. Give him a round of applause, Misa. So we're going to take a quick break, a quick break, guys, and we will be right back. Try to replace me, but bitch, I want to recon. You know, I be racing up on the Highway 95. Look, I don't give a fuck why these niggas hating on me. Oh, wait, because I got your bitch tripping on me. She said my love for methazine got her leaning on me. Spanish mommy with that accent that she called me poppy. Okay. Yo, what it do, what it do? It's your boy Misa from the pod. Yo. I know y'all have noticed how good me and Chris look rocking this merch, huh? Well, this is all thanks to our sponsor, Next Gen Sports. Next Gen Sports is your local destination for all things sports, from sports cards to authentic sneakers, customizable t-shirts, and even official team jerseys. So whether you're buying, selling, or trading sports merch, cards, or sneakers, Next Gen Sports is your go-to for the most fire sports gear. What's that? Oh, you're not a big sports fan? <laughs> That's all gravy, baby. Next Gen Sports is still your go-to spot for all customizable shirts. Just like this one. Look. Sheesh. Anyways, guys. The best part about all this, it's super affordable. There's delivery here in El Paso. Shipping anywhere in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. So, go on. Go. Go check out Next Gen Sports. On all social media platforms, including TikTok, it's all in the description below, guys. Go support the people that rock with us. Tell them that Chris and Misa from the pod send you. And as always, stay fresh. All right, guys, we are back from break. Episode 163 featuring Mr. Joey Sanchez of Fungi Mungle. Give him another round of applause, Misa. Add a triple horn. Give him a fucking horn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hell yeah thank you all for being here again guys thank you all for listening subscribing watching we really do appreciate it uh mr joey thank you for being here how are you Thanks. feeling the vibes today man it's fun it's fun we're having a good time first podcast right i asked you this off off lot uh off mic and you said you hadn't done a pod before I, I mean, we're gin. We're so gin. you're allowing me to pop that podcast Whoa, cherry of yours. god pop. i love it ah there it is yes uh, sir it's good to be new <laughs> yeah dude. it's good to be loved so so you, you you were saying that you you actually like are thinking of starting your own podcast, right? Uh, yeah, we want to do that. We want to do that. And, you know, some, it's more for the boot company though, just kind of stuff, um, informational about cowboy boots and stuff. And you know, the way the whole market of cowboy boots has changed. You know, Ariat kind of came strong, and they were making all their boots in China, and they, I think they finally transitioned to Mexico now. But it's just funny because when uh, Ariat hit, then all the other big brands adjusted to what Ariat was doing because they were so popular. And it was like weird. It's like one of those things where you're caught in a bubble, like what what happened in the world? This is, why would you be imitating an ugly Chinese boot? Right. You're, they should be imitating you, you know? It's the strangest thing happened. So then uh, that whole thing kind of happened. Now I think <coughs> more boots are, uh, they're trying to transition back into Mexico. I mean, obviously like um, Tecovis and all those bands, are brand new bands that come in. Um, but anyway, um, I would just like to, uh, I see people wearing boots and I see these huge boots on people and I know why they're, why I buy and buy, the boots are big on them because, you know, salespeople don't know how to sell boots anymore. You don't get a good salesperson. You get some kid <coughs> and he's working his way to college. Right. And, oh my gosh, I love boots. I could sell some boots. Sure. I love me some boots. I don't, oh, and then somebody throws it on, you know, or if they're having trouble pulling it on, but just give them a bigger size. Yeah. Give them a bigger size. Just, it's okay. Just get it out the door. It don't matter. Just get it out the door. <laughs> and so, you know, it can be kind of fun to play. They'd like go around interviewing people like, hey, where'd you get your boots? And and you can just see these huge boots, like like bozo clown boots on them. Right? <laughs> walk around like, ah, ha, ha, ha. And have, you, have your laugh like track. Clown shoes. Give me a laugh track. Give me, give me a laugh. Give them the can, laugh, Misa. Can you, Misa? Misa? A laugh? Yeah, give me a laugh. Uh, I don't have the a cheer. Laugh. Give them the cheer. You got cheers. a laugh? No, we don't have a, we don't have oh. a laugh. No, normally, the laughs aren't programmed. They yeah, usually come. It's just natural. How about a <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what, was, what was that? Anyways, <laughs> bro, you're like a lot a human soundboard over here, uh, for real. Uh, yeah. Did you see an increase with like the uh, popularity of like Yellowstone and 
Oh, I hate that stupid show. I've never seen it, but I just so, imagine Yellowstone is so stupid. Fuck. I would watch it for the scenery my, if I watched. My it. wife loves that show. It is so stupid. Yellowstone. What it's, is it? It's, it's like it's, 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 Yellowstone. No, well, it's but they're a, cowboys. No, it's, a cow- it's this guy in Montana. Cowboys. This family in Montana owns this land. They're trying to stop people from you know modernizing yeah. it and, and then there's indians it. involved yeah, and shit yeah, wait there's the indians but the, but the, the, the indians, other natives the indians the are kind of like the bad people because they want to progress right, right. and uh, he and, uh, it's, it's what's his name from uh, dancing with wolves kevin costner kevin yeah. costner come on don't you want to strangle him you see us hey it's kevin <laughs> don't you want can to we strangle you now <laughs> how old is this show <laughs> it's like now no it's still going yeah it's like really popular they even made like popular they made like a fucking prequel series like 1865 or yeah whatever with uh, harrison ford <laughs> right but yeah this is like probably the most popular show oh, on yeah, tv right now I would so say. like everyone wants to dress like that guy. yeah it's right. horrible i mean <laughs> he looks good i mean you know he looks like he's like yeah he looks god <laughs> he looks good. They're gone. Take so, me to very the popular in dallas so oh, i love that you were also telling us joey you kind of like started dabbling with fucking uh some stand-up here and there stand-up right? I stand there and people look at you. How do you how do you like it so far? That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I like it. It's really the creative process in comedy is it's it's pretty intense. I mean, if you can get into it as much as you want to or not, and um, it's just uh, I had to like make space for it in my life because I got like, I had these other businesses and stuff that was going on in Bungie Mungo. <laughs> And so I want anyway, so uh, Nico started doing those things and they had some classes for um, writing classes. Workshops. Yeah, the yeah, workshops. Fun. So I started going to that and they're like, you just got to get on stage. I'm like, oh, no, no, I got to work out my routine. Like, I just got to get on stage. And then he was, you know, he was, he's like told his story where he's like, yeah, I had my thing together and I got on stage and I forgot everything I was going to say. And so I'm like, well, that's not going to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got up there and had it all worked out and like, and Stage then right. I tried to tell 17 jokes all at one time. <clears throat> I mean, it's like, that's like, and everybody's like, is that even English, dude? Like, you know, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like if you got like, uh, I don't know, like, let's just, you know, those words you put on a refrigerator, right? right. And you had a sentence and then just like you mixed them all up and just said words like all together, but no. Yeah. That's, that's what I was like the first time. I was <laughs> <up>. I was <laughs> like, blah, 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 blah. And there was like, what the hell was that? And then the girl that went on after me, her name's Tonali. She's, um, she goes, oh yeah, I popped my cherry up here too on this stage. But I gotta tell you what, that was way bloodier. <laughs> I was like, oh, so good. I was like, yeah, that's yeah. pretty true. Were you like, were you nervous? Like, or what? Was no, you- well, I just have a lot of energy. I'm used to music on right. stage. It's easy because <clears throat> in a band, you're just a monkey on a chain. You're just, right. you're just like same song. I don't even have to write the lyrics. I mean, most of the time I don't even learn the lyrics. I just fake the lyrics. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing it for decades, right? Right. But nobody knows the words, the songs, right? They just know the melody as long right. as you do. And if you got to know yeah. the fat lady parts, what I call them, with like in the opera, those, ah, right? But everybody knows the fat lady parts in the songs, like the choruses and stuff. Right. Um, so, but it's easy. After a while, especially like Fungi Mongo, you know, we've been using the same, pretty much the same songs for 25 years now, you know, and we can, I'll be that dude in the old person's home doing get down tonight, son. Get down. Oh, I broke a hip. <laughs> okay, stand still today. Um, but comedy is different because you can't go up there and like it's not you can't. There's no cover comics, right. which is weird. You figured there would be like, oh, we're gonna do cover comedy night. Well, I, I think that'd be kind of a funny thing to do. Well, I think it's the opposite than music. Like in music, like you're allowed like covers, you know. And mm-hmm. stand up, it's like, yo, this guy just did my bit. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, I've yeah. heard that joke before. Yeah, yeah. like you it know what I mean. Me. Like the first time I was one of my bits was Donald Duck getting a blowjob, right? And I've been doing that for <laughs> decades. <laughs> <laughs> and this dude did, Don, but he can't. He can't do Donald Duck as good as I do. Not no 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 offense to him, and he knows. But he does. He does a good job with that joke. And Fucking and so I was Duck. like, damn, I can't do that joke tonight. But his his is a uh, Donald Duck getting a blowjob, and then and it turns out to be goofy at the end, like oh. Right? And but mine was Donald Duck getting a blowjob on a roller coaster, and so I'm like, <laughs> you know, type thing, and um. <laughs> so I never did that joke on stage yet with them. <laughs> like but, what a roller coaster ride, huh? Yeah, why, a ro- why a roller yeah, coaster? Why is he on a <laughs> roller coaster? It's Disneyland. Who the fuck is sucking his cock? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Daisy, tail feather, oh, whatever. Daisy, what is he? Daisy. 
Does he have a dick? Does Donald Duck, Duck have a dick? <laughs> Donald Duck. Donald, 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 Donald Dick. Donald Dick. Donald, Donald Dick. You know, I'm never going to be like to post this and say like, hey, well, Fungi Mungo fans, watch this because it's so dirty. But um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to edit a lot of this out. No, but uh, yeah, it's fun. And then I the, the, um, actually uh, did comedy uh, like, I don't know, before COVID. And um, I did a thing at Max. And we sold it out and I had like 10 other comics, but I was like, I was, you know, I was like, I ran to the joke so fast and then I didn't do it again because I just had other things going on. But it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Writing, it's, writing it's, your material. Um, and you think, God, I got all this. You can have 10 pages. And it's like, well, that's two minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, it goes by like that. So who are your like top three comedians? Like who do you um, love? I, you know, I, you're not going to know any of these people. <laughs> you're not going to know. But there was uh, when I was there. There used to be this thing called HBO, right? Way yes. back when, it's still around. But HBO was the Netflix at the right. time, right? That the soft porn that night and shit. No, well, no, that was um, Cinemax. 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 Yeah, Skinemax. Yeah, uh, HBO did have kind of. They pushed the boundaries. They had real sex. Yeah, like Arthur, you know. <laughs> Once in a life, you find out. Uh, I, I, hey. <laughs> Creepy guy. What's, What's his name again? COVID What's his name again? Chewy. 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 <laughs> chewy, 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 chewy. I liked Billy Crystal a lot. Okay. He did some really good. And Robin Williams was, you know, all that. Jim Carrey, all those, two, you know, just normal ones. Um, uh, there's, I mean, they're playing Jimmy, uh, what's his name? Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor is crazy. I wanted to be, if I could be a comic, be Richard Pryor. Be Richard Pryor. Holy shit. Like, like if Richard Pryor and Robin Williams had a baby. The, uh, this is you? I, I'd, be the, I'd be the comical child. It'd be a weird that, that's baby. What I'd, no, I'm not saying I am that. Okay. Just like that, that's that's kind of like the space I right, think right, I'd right. well. Or Jim Carrey. And a Jim, but Jim Carrey does those faces, man. Who can do those faces? Yeah, his impersonations are like fucking out of this world, dude. Crazy. But like energy level like matches his. So it's interesting right. he said those, you know, three. Yeah. Right. And then that, like when I, right now when I go do stand up, they're always, uh, Nico's always like, calm down, calm down. You're about to go. It's okay. Calm uh -huh. down. Just calm down. At least start calm. Mm -hmm. At least start calm. And then, and then the work into it. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. So that's been, I've been just, I'm not really, <sighs> this is stupid. I'm not worried about being funny right now. I mean, I want to be funny and I want the people laughing. I'm getting a couple laughs. You're here just there. working out the kinks. I'm just trying to work on techniques. You know, right. like one of my techniques is like knowing three jokes. Yeah. Just know three jokes and be, go through them, you know. And if I can accomplish, like that was one of my, Things and I accomplished it one time, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty good." So I'm at about three jokes, and then I'm like, "Oh, where am I at? Where am I at?" You know, and hopefully somebody in the crowd kind of. I think it. you know. I think what helps, because um, I, I mean, I, I tried out stand up a couple of times myself, so I, I know how hard it is and stuff. But what I like about you is your, um, your uh, how electric you are. You know, you're, you're very. See, it's it's weird because it's like, I'm talking right now, right? And we're having a good time. It's my turn to go on stage. Uh, I'm on stage now. Yeah. Now I got to tell my jokes. It's just weird. Yeah. You need like this. Like I was just talking to you, and now I'm freaked out because right. right. yeah. So I just got to get to that point where it's I like, think I think like once natural. you get to it, I think uh, you you kind of remind me of like a Don Rickles. Well, Don I don't want to attack the crowd. He's very much. like a yeah. like very spazzy and very. Yeah. But it, you know, it's funny. I think uh, I think yeah. I think more people I, like that. Yeah, maybe. I mean. Don Rickles is very, I'd rather more like Jerry Lewis, you know, you know, Jerry Lewis is. Yeah. I do know Jerry Lewis. He's my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what up, Jerry? Uh, so I Shout out like to that. Jerry. You know what? Uh, I saw watching that uh, uh, Comedians in Cars. Oh, yeah. With Jerry. Or, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld. That's a good show. And he was, yeah, I forgot who he had somebody on. Uh, it was either, it was like, um, not, not Richard Pryor. <laughs> you had a Richard Pryor on? Uh, name another black comic. Uh, Chris Rock. Kevin Hart. Mm, Eddie Murphy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Eddie we Murphy. just keep naming them. We're just, just going through them. And so he had, it was like Eddie Murphy or somebody like that. And they're talking about the drive around. And then he's like, uh, uh, basically, if you can handle uh, rejection and, and, uh, uh, and uh, you know, whatever, just, if you can handle rejection, you can make it in comedy. And I was like watching that. I was like, shit, I've been married 34 years. I can handle, <laughs> I can handle rejection. I'm going to do this, you know. And that was like one of my first jokes. I should have done, but, uh, my family promised I wouldn't uh, 
make fun of them, which yeah, I really broke that promise. <laughs> Cause that's the funniest stuff is your family it's hard right? well your real life and there's right, this, this one life. dude what's that comic i was telling you his name here in el paso um he's so funny and he just talks about real life stuff i got his name right here i'll do a shout out to my boy my boy uh, let's see his name josh ryan he's got perfect name right josh ryan two first names yeah i love that but, <laughs> but he does like he's like i guess he grew up in the barrio and he's always no, that's not him. No, oh, <laughs> no. There's, that's oh, a more famous Papi Josh. Chulo, Ryan. Papi. No, I don't think he's got anything <laughs> like that. No, no, it's, I don't think he has anything. He has just on Facebook, on the face, Miha. Okay. On the face. <laughs> he, um, but the dude is so good, man. Oh my god, he's been doing it for eight months. He's kind of in our class of um, comics coming up here in El Paso. So good. I, th I think that's the title. I think right. that's him at the very top. Yeah. Yeah, he's friends with Jordan. Yeah. yeah oh, so. He's so good, man. If you get it, just go see that guy. He's going to be huge. I guarantee he'll be on TV. He'll be that guy. He's a good writer. And I see people like that. Is that the guy with a hoodie? Mm hmm. No. No, that's Jordan right there. He's the guy in the middle. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay. but he wears like black on stage, just like a like black hat, black t shirt, black pants. And he's just got his look together. With some Theo he's, Vaughn. He's, dude, so his like, jokes are just perfect, man. It's just like great, great jokes, you know? And uh, it's just nice to see that. So you're starting to get to meet like all these uh, comedians here, like uh, Ponchi Herrera, Bunchy. Iggy. Yeah. <coughs> Shout out to Nico. I've never, I've never seen, I've never seen Ponchi. <coughs> Bunchy, <coughs> dude, Bunchy is fucking funny. He's been on this podcast like four uncle times Bunchy. too. Uncle Bunchy. He's actually my oh. uncle now, is officially. Yeah. Oh, right. We signed the paperwork about two weeks ago. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. Well, well, I thought you were one of those illegals he's chasing. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was. That's how it started, you know? And then like, he, he thought I was cool, so he let me go. Um, but yeah, so, but uh, it's cool because we've had like almost all those guys on the podcast and they're really cool because like, uh, like Nico was telling you like, Hey man, just like sl slow down, like stay calm first. And then, yeah. you know, yeah. so it's kind of cool that they all look after each other and they all yeah, kind of give like, each other tips, go to each other's shows. It's a cool group, you know, cause you know, I'm not good yet at comedy. Um, and everybody's just like, Oh, that's great. You wrote your own stuff. I could have said it was terrible shit. Why did you say that? Right. You know? And, and they're like, we didn't, you know, they're like, kind of like, were you in a band? And I was like, bands don't do that. Bands are like, dude, you suck. Right. That's it. They're not very supportive. Even yeah. when you're great, they're like, man, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> Could have done better. It's ne no, never. It's never like, you guys are great. And I was right. like, no, you suck. It's always like that. Bands are just, musicians are, are little bitches. <laughs> so yeah. They really are. We're, we're, but with com comics, you know, because everybody sucks. And you're like. You did great. Come back tomorrow. No, it's horrible. Just come back tomorrow. Just come back, yeah. dude. Just come back. And you're like, okay, I'll come back. And then they hug you. And then they buy you a beer and shit. No, they don't buy you. And then they ask if they don't have money. They don't ever buy you beer. And then they ask if you could give them a ride home. Hey, you got a car, bro. You can bring all of us. We can carpool next time. We saw this guy, guitarist. Sorry, Ruben. I'm going to say it, but Ruby. And this one guy wrote a song about him called Ruben. Hey, can you can I borrow your guitar? Ruben, hey, can I borrow cable? <laughs> can you give me a ride? It was like the funniest stupid song. <laughs> it's just bars asking for everything. Oh, yeah, I know. He said he didn't have an app, he didn't have a guitar, he had to pawn it. So. Yeah, dude. But <laughs> borrow, borrow some music for rehearsal. You know? it, it's like, cool because there are some like really good uh, local comedians here. Like Puga is really good. Fucking Otis Hicks, uh, Iggy, Julian yeah. Luetta, uh, Anthony Austin Brown. Yeah. Uh, Nico's a fucking, he's really good yeah. at it too. Yeah. I really think Bunchy's like, like Bonchi's so funny because he just has so much material and he's yeah. just like he's been doing it for so long. Uh, but it's cool to see you like getting like involved with the scene and kind of like not really caring about like like uh, you know like you said I'm not trying to make everyone laugh at first. I'm working on my technique, my yeah, delivery. It's all technique. <clears throat> because like you said, like uh, you have all these jokes, but then you know it, in t two minutes you're done. So yeah. it's more about like how you set up the joke, the pacing, the yeah, timing. That's hard. All that, that's what takes repetition to get down, you know? Yeah. And like, like, like the latest technique I'm on is, um, so it used to be a take a uh, joke, punch, joke, punch, joke, punch, joke, punch, joke, punch, joke, punch. And then everybody's like, where's he going? Where's he going? So now I'm like, joke, punch, tag, 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 tag. tag. I'm trying to get to that kind of pacing yeah. and then joke, 
the same thing, et cetera. Instead of joking about church, we're going to go just jumping around so much. And uh, so I, I guess because, you know, I've seen a lot of, I've been watching comedians, and that's what they do at the big ones. That's all they do. They joke, punch, tag, and stay on that topic until you kill it. And then you move on to something else. And, uh, you know, that way you, you kind of, people have to, have to have something to latch on to, I guess, in the audience, you know. And so you got to think, how's the audience receiving this and how's it going to take it? You know what I mean? And uh, I want to be kind of more um, physical, but I'm not there yet because I'm still having, having problems getting out the initial jokes, you know, and just remembering and just trying presence of mind. It's just weird. It's, it's stupid because it's like I could do it right here and on a microphone. I could do it in a studio. I could do my whole routine like right, right now. I guarantee you I could do it. But putting on the mic on stage with the mic, it's just everything's different. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it is. Like, um, like because me and Chris, you know, when we first started the pod and we, we met with Nico and we got him in, he's, he's the one that opened up, you know, that whole door for us to, you know, get with all these other comedians. And that kind of pushed me to want to try uh, do some stand-up. And, and we did it. We did it at Scenics a couple mm -hmm. of times. And that was my whole thing. My whole thing for me was always been like in the moment. It's really easy. It's just like I could be the funny guy right there, but to actually go up there and say a whole story, everybody's looking like at me. It, it's easy now. It's easy now because like you're you're conversating with somebody, so they're giving you some type of content to yeah. like make a joke out of. But yeah. when you're up there, you're not talking. You're, nobody's you're not, talking back I'm to talking you. You're just yeah, talking. It's all, all you. It's all you. So you're trying to remember all this stuff. But and the first time I went, like I I thought I I freaking like I. I thought I was like, that was just pretty shitty, but that just made me think like how hard it is mm -hmm. and like it's how much of a skill you need and balls you fucking need to just go up there balls. and like be funny. Balls. Cause like when I was a kid and being in a band and I, I really wasn't that good of a singer, you know? And, um, not that I'm a great singer now or anything, but, um, and so, um, I'd get so nervous and so the whole day. I'd hope I'd just get sick so I could have a reason to cancel the gig. I was just like vomiting bad, you know, yeah. and then it's closer. You got to the gig and you're waiting and you're back and about to go on in the first song. And fuck, why am I doing this? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's over. Yeah. But that energy of that. Uh, and then you're on stage. I hadn't, I hadn't felt that in a long time because you know Fungi Mungo, it's it's so easy, right? You, you know, used to. and you're not you're not up against the challenge of unless there's like a new guy on the stage with us, um, you know, it's, that's you're not confident with, then that's a different kind of like. Nervous. It's that whole point of being like that in that uncomfortable position yeah. to try and something new, and like Fungi Mungo boots, um, other things I do in life, and it was just. I can tell the same joke and make it sound like the same joke over and over. Right. Right. Which is Fungi Mungles, you know, it's kind of a comedy act, right? But you, you can tell that same joke over and over and people think, wow, it's fresh. But I just, it's so easy. There's no challenge to it. And I mean, there's certain challenges you could, I could challenge myself in different ways, but then you get comfortable and you're like, ah. I got it. <laughs> I need, they're already giving us beer. Yeah. Ah, come on. <laughs> um, but uh, comedy, you cannot fake it. You can't have like, there's no, hey, my buddy over here is a great comic. Can you give him a break? I'm like, how many times have you done it? Well, it doesn't matter. He's my buddy. Well, that's not going to work. You know what I mean? There's no, none of that. Right. It's like. Because the moment he gets up there, get, it's going to be fucking obvious that he hasn't done anything. Why am I here? And I, <laughs> yeah. And so that whole energy, every single time I go up and I, like, I, I kind of, I've, I've been making the mistake of writing new material every time I go up. And it's like, I, I don't have the last one re memorized, right? But I just like, <laughs> so my facing's off and people are just like, huh? But I'm just trying to work out and see what, or if anything gets a I laugh think people, I think people get the most laugh out of like tragedy. Like, yeah, especially if like, if it's something that like <laughs> they can relate to, you know, but they, they make like, they make like a fucking like a, um, a loved one that passed away such a funny thing yeah you know like yeah my uncle just passed away last week or whatever that motherfucker owed me 10 bucks <laughs> the fuck is gonna pay me back you know, like, well, that one dude has that joke about he's i uh, saw a picture of his uh, some girls and uh, nails and he's oh man it's a nice pedicure she's it's my mom she's dead bro <laughs> and he's oh well i work in a he works in a mortuary. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I did her nails. <laughs> like, cool guy. <laughs> yeah. Cool it's guy. Like, oh, good. so good. It's like, yes. But that's crazy. That's, that's, that's what I that's love real. about comedy, though. Yeah. Um, somebody had told me, um, I can't remember, in, in a long time ago, and, and he said, like, um, tragedy is just uh, comedy misunderstood or yeah. something like that. 
That's it. And, and, and that's just made perfect sense. I was like, dude, you can make a joke out of anything. 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 Everything's funny. Just the way you say it. It's yeah. just the way you, the way you it. set it up and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing that you were saying about like being up there doing a comedy show versus being up there doing like a show for Fungi Mungle is that like the crowd is super different. The crowd for Fungi Mungle, they're there because they know who you are. They want to like, they know what you're going to play. So right. you already know you have them in your pocket essentially. Right. Uh, when you're, when you go up at Scenics on a random Friday night, you don't know who's there. You don't know who's seen you or not. And you're yeah. about to get tested and to see how good you are because these people are ultimately going to be the ones that are laughing. Yeah. But I mean, I think so. I, a lot of people take that a little too serious there at Scenics because it's, you know, it's the same 20 comics. Yeah. Right. And sometimes there's t- 10 drunk people. Sometimes. Sometimes there's three. Depends on where you're out in the slot, too, because people leave. And then, like, sometimes, most, a lot of times I'm the last one on because I'm the last one to sign up. And, you know, everybody's gone. Right. So I'm just to the 10 comics that stayed, you know. And they're going to laugh. So why are you even trying to make them laugh? Unless you're really good. Because uh-huh. there's some guys that can make everybody laugh. But I'm not that good. Well, I'm going to work on my other techniques till I can get to that. But there'll be other guys that are just destroyed. Like, oh, I was horrible tonight. I'm like, to who? <laughs> I bombed and I, to, who do quit? There was nobody to bomb to. Right. You know? <laughs> you have to have a full fucking like, <laughs> theater to that's be it. bombing. That, and and that's the thing yeah. is like, with the, the big difference, like you're making, like they like saying, like Fungi Mungle, we show up, but there's a thousand people or a hundred people or whatever. Right. And this is a, you know, 10 people. And it's, it's not, you know, and then the difference is everybody knows the words to uh, uh, Jungle Boogie or Get Down Tonight or whatever. Yeah, everybody on earth knows those words so they can relate to it and they have relatable um, memories to it. But my right. jokes are not. It's like right. the first time you heard any of your favorite song. The very first time you heard that song, you didn't have relatable memories to it. And you're listening to it like, hmm, well, it's that, all right. that's yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then you yeah, heard it yeah. over and over and all of a sudden, you know, life right. happens. That's just in front of 10, pregnant. but... What I also notice is like doing it even like if it's a full bar, you know, like it was packed last night. Like it, it, it should like it gets it, it would get me when I would be talking and then like you'd see maybe like a handful actually looking at you and paying attention, yeah. and you see a whole table like just laughing, looking at each other, like yeah, they're paying not paying attention, attention to you they're at all. And, their then, own and yeah. then you start feeling good because you you th- you start thinking there's people that are giving you a standing ovation, but they're just standing because there's no chairs allowed. Yeah. You know, there's no more chairs. <laughs> That's funny. That's good. But, Did you do that on stage? Did you do that? That's so good. No, but. Oh, it's just because yeah. you don't have any. I'm gonna steal that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't right have now. any chairs. What's that guy? Uh, uh, that old Mexican dude that does it. Uh, flauta. You ever seen flauta? Ah, so, but the flauta sound good right now. Dude, <laughs> Some fucking he's, he's like this whole dude, and he goes up, and he's just he's so funny. So he's like, you know, you talk like that, like, oh, I see, I get it. I can see him doing that joke. He had this joke. He's like, you know, your hand gets gets itchy, it gets itchy, and you get all excited because you're about to get money. I went home the other day. My, my wife was there, and my balls got itchy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "That's so good." I, I would like, I would like to go up and then like just kind of have everybody cheer. Like, just another round of applause, guys! Come on! And and most of the time, I'd get everybody cheered up, and then once they're all kind of rattled up, I'd be like, "All right, man. Well, I got nothing. Oh, I'm out." Yeah, thank yeah, thank you. Have a good night. That's not, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> so, do you see yourself uh, t- like continuing to pursue comedy? Yeah. Yeah, that's like it's my new your new thing. New heroin. Okay, nice. That's good, dude. The new drug in town. We're, we're glad that you're stuck on some black tar car- comedy heroin. That's yeah. good. <laughs> well, I like because we were asked talking about goals and stuff. At, uh, this because uh, we're doing this thing called Right Club at my my boot shop on Tuesday nights. Tuesday nights, seven p.m. Right Club at Caboots. Come on down, <laughs> and um, it's fun. Uh, but we we're talking about goals this week, and like you know, everybody has everybody has. It's way strange. Some people have. I'm not going to dog people. But anyway, um, so my goal is like, I don't want a Netflix special. <laughs> and everybody just laughs. Like, yeah, fuck, you're going to be right. I'm like, well, why are you doing this? I don't, you know? I said, like, and, and then I kind of have goals, but I was like, the, the real goal is if I could get as good at comedy as I did with Fungi Mungle, I think I'd be, I'd be all right. right. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be comfortable at that level because, you know, I could be, you know, going out and doing stuff, playing theaters and stuff. And that's really, I'd like to be playing theaters. You know, maybe I mean an opener for for some of these headliners, and maybe work my way up. You know, I don't know, right. and see where it goes from just, there. Yeah, why not just fall, like go down the road and yeah. see where it kind of takes you. Yeah. As far as your f- future with the band, uh, Fungi Mungle, like, um, are you guys you guys have things coming up like this? Yeah, we this got some year? good stuff. This year's going to be really good. We got uh, we're doing uh, 
uh, Fat Tuesday. It, it's downtown, blocking off streets. Oh, right yeah, dude. The, Sick. The Indigo. Right there. That's going to be like a, like a, a block K- party. KLAQ presents Funky Bungle. Ah, Fat Tuesday. <laughs> and then uh, we're doing um, <laughs> and it's a cool candy. He just yeah. sounds like a fucking radio person. Out my dad, like, well, come on down. When come was, on down. When I was a kid, my dad, kept, he always said, he said, I don't think they put it up yet. They haven't marked oh, okay, you know, yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's still it's a little early. They're pushing. Yeah. Like, we just barely oh, got February the February will be here before yeah. you know it. I just I just got the like uh, yeah it's gonna happen uh, yesterday so okay yeah so <laughs> so there's no artwork barely got green lighted yeah and then so we're gonna do a Cool Canyon Nights is July the last Thursday in July what is that July twenty seventh something like that around mm-hmm. your birthday Chris oh yeah we're the closer we're the closer July twenty seventh funky mo- you like that my dad told me to be a DJ when I was a kid. So, Mijo, you should go be a DJ, you know? You, you can do those voices and shit. <laughs> yeah, no you can use all these voices you and got. And I was like, Dad, <laughs> I'm not going to sit in a studio and do that. stupid. It's okay. <sighs> yeah, my mom, you would when die. I was younger, my mom would tell me, like, you need to be in the radio. And I'd be like, really? She's like, yeah, because you never shut the hell up. Oh. Like, uh, you got a face for radio, Mijo. <laughs> <laughs> such an old joke right? like every time you talk me so i hear blurry it's like what i yeah i think you should be on the radio that way i can turn it down <laughs> that, way, that way i can turn you off just like that. Fucking, i can change the station yeah. <laughs> Mijo, i love you but I'm, I'm, I'm listening to something else it's a dude like a you i think you're really good at these impersonations like You've, is that something you've always been doing since yeah, you were like a kid? Just I can, fucking yeah, I can do everything. Making fun of people and the I, way I, they talk and it's shit. It's like when Clinton came and visited, you know, he's like, it hey, was Clinton was like, and I said, oh, he's he going to so Clinton watch you go, I sure do love the senoritas in this town. <laughs> I did not have sexual relationships with that sure. woman. Uh, my, my, but her, yeah. My, my wife said he did not say that. I'm like, mentally he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, was he, was he was thinking it. He was thinking it. Sure. Oh, I'm gonna go. I wish I could chase some tail walls. <laughs> can you take me to Mexico? Can you take? <laughs> can you take? Yeah, dude, that's crazy. I think uh, I I really like you did this uh, impersonation of a goat or a lamb, <laughs> <laughs> and a fucking <laughs> uh, Muslim <laughs> guy <laughs> fucking <laughs> the goat. <laughs> 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 My son says I can't do that anymore. I can't do that. I feel like he's done it way too much to be that guy. Like they say, you can't do those voices anymore. Like why not? It's like it's just insensitive. Yeah, you can't. And I was like, well, that is twenty twenty three, man. That's so gay. Do you you can't say that either? Do you have a goat impression or a lamb impression? Yeah. <laughs> my son, my, mine sounds like when Messi says something. It's <laughs> <laughs> having a goat off over here. The fucking uh, first annual goat, goat, goat off. <laughs> I don't know why. I am the first goat. Yeah. I am the first goat. I don't know why that shit is so funny to me. It's just like <laughs> the best goat I've ever fucking heard. Because it sounds like a real goat. I am goat. the goat. I'm the goat. You, you ever see gonna... that goat commercial <laughs> where they're working in the factory? Uh, no, I don't Look think it up. So. You gotta hear it with sound. Obviously. Okay, fuck it. I am the greatest of all talents. <laughs> <clears throat> I can do a lot of voices. Yeah, dude, that's I really kind of so. When I was younger, uh, I had these opportunities, and I was in LA, and I didn't take advantage of any of them, I'm like an idiot. And that's like one of my biggest regrets. Is like you were there, you were there, but I just wanted to come home to my wife. You s- you spent how much time in LA? A lot, a lot, a lot. In my twenties, yeah. You really, you really liked it out there. Like, no, it's, it was horrible. Why but would you go out there so much? Selling boots, I just sell boots because I was to do that. boots rock stars. Okay. I mean, there was time uh, we, I mean, we sold boots to everybody, Motley Crue, right? Like everybody, right? And our boots were in MTV videos, and we're, I'd go backstage and hang out and parties, and it was freaking great. But the more I was around rock stars and um, people in that industry. I, I, I realized I couldn't do that. I, I, I physically couldn't be that. Right. Because they're all fucked up. They were just horrible. Yeah. Like, um, so case in point, case in point was uh, the first time I met Paul Stanley, <clears throat> he um, invited me to, um, they were putting the makeup back on that video where they put the makeup back on for, I don't know what song it was, but, and so I got invited to that. And um, 
so uh, he said, just hang out. There's food over there, beer over there. Just, just, just hang out. There's food, food over here, beer over there. Well, he's kind of got a Jersey <laughs> accent, right? Can't do him very well. But um, so he uh, goes, you can be in the video if you want. Come out of here if you want to hang out. Just whatever you want to do, Joey. Just hang out. I'll talk to you in a bit. And so uh, <laughs> he went and did his thing. And so Bruce Kulik was the guitarist at the time. And the, the drummer from Cinderella were there in the room. Have you ever heard of these bands, Cinderella? You know Cinderella? The movie? <laughs> no, really? Yeah, never I've never heard of Cinderella. Oh, oh shut up! Look them up. Uh, <laughs> Pull up Cinderella. Cinderella. First thing's gonna come up is the goddamn shoe. They kind of like were a, uh, They were like an Aerosmith ripoff yeah. band, uh, but heavy metal. Anyway, there you go. See, like, a, and the guitarist just died. God bless. Look at that hair. Fucking the crap. guitarist just died, and their career died way before that. Oh my God! Did I just say that? You did. Mouth? Anyway, Cinderella. The drummer's from Cinderella, and uh, Bruce Kulick were hat and this. And then the drummer says, "Oh my God! I just, I, I, I just, I, I had to check my hat self in the hospital last week." And Bruce is like, "What's up? You okay? Do you need help? How can I help you? What's going on, man?" Well, you know, I just, I just had all the stress out of stress. I couldn't, I didn't know what to do about it. So I, I had, I had, you know, the ambulance came and got me, took me to the hospital. So how long were you there? I was like, I don't know, like two weeks, man. I couldn't, I was in a hospital. And this is what happened. Was, well, you know, you're on the road. You, you, you know, you, you just got to make two decisions a day. Should, should I eat at the hotel or should I eat at catering? Should I take a sh shower at the hotel or, or a shower at the gig? Other than that, everything's there. can barrel. Get home. You got to decide what to eat every day, what clothes to wear. I mean, I just couldn't handle it. I was like, shit. <laughs> you're like, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and these were two big rock stars right. at the time. They're on MTV every single day. And then, um, uh, what's uh, Sebastian Bach was in? Uh, you guys are so gay. You don't know these bands. <laughs> I've heard of Sebastian Bach. Yeah, Sebastian Bach. <laughs> He's uh, what band was he in? He was Skid Row. There we go, Skid Row. I've heard of Skid Row. Skid Row yeah, right? we would have yeah. got that. Ricky I've heard of that was one. a young boy. <laughs> He had a heart of stone, right? You heard that song, maybe? <laughs> I think not. I feel like, uh, yeah, I feel like my dad would know a lot of yeah, these fucking I, bands. My dad, you're, <laughs> here we go. You're doing that again. My dad, <laughs> my dad really Res loves your band. Respectfully. <laughs> uh, you guys playing Dre? <laughs> so um, I'm backstage, and the guitarist from uh, that said band is back there, and he's been crying about something. <laughs> and I heard him, and I was backstage. And I said, dude, what's going on, man? He's, uh, he's just bitching and whining because the tour got extended or something. And I said, hey, remember when you were out broke on the streets and you didn't have anything going on in your life and you had no future? And you think, I'd do anything for this. Were you there, buddy? I'm like, who the fuck is this guy backstage telling me this shit? And he goes, you don't understand. You don't understand. Fuck you, you don't understand. And then he left. I did. Jeez. I mean, I didn't. Well, he had every right to tell. Yeah, me. Yeah, I yeah, had no course. right to tell that guy that, but it's true, you know. And and and, but the the truth of the matter is, like those dudes, you get a record contract. And look at, I'm not freaking Sebastian Bach, you know. You can tell I'm no, I'm no Brad Pitt or nothing like that. I mean, I know I look like him, but I'm no, you know, I, I I'm not a beautiful boy, and that's what they were signing at the time. And and I just like it wasn't going to happen for me. And plus, I wasn't like a primary songwriter. I like I wasn't a musician. I was a vocalist, you know. So I knew it was really going to be really, you know, you're going to have to take it in the butt, really, if you yeah. want. And this, literally, you're going to have to take it in the butt if you really want <laughs> to break it for that. And, and I wasn't going to do that. As a matter of fact, I had an opportunity. We had an opportunity to play uh, Reed's Fest, the Reading Fest in, one, in London once when I was a teenager with uh, Tokyo Rose. And um, they said, well, yeah, the promoter really likes you. I was in London. The promoter really likes you, Joey. He thinks you're cute. Just go sleep with him so we can play. What? <laughs> what the fuck? How old were you? 18, you said? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> what? And I was like, I guess we're not going to be rock stars. <laughs> hey, man, if you don't want a gut, put it in your butt. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Yeah, I was like, well. But, I mean, that shit really happens. You know, you hear stories about that. Right, yeah, right, right. And so, uh, anyway, so, uh, uh, <laughs> it's just, you know, I just, I couldn't do it. I just... I'm not going to, I can't sell my soul this way. And I wasn't, it'd be one thing if like you're a prince and you're like, yeah, I can write, I can play everything, play it, like, write and write and write, you know, people like that, but I'm not that. So, um, I didn't pursue it in that manner and came back to El Paso and just stayed in cover bands. And then we had the boot company, so it was busy and we we're doing shit like that. So it was kind of cool. 
Yeah, dude, that's crazy. That's an interesting story too. And it's like, it's kind of, it shows the reason why you kind of decided like, uh, I don't need to get into all that because you were around it so much and you could, you could kind of see how these guys were living in like, well, it's it's like, it's like you signed a record deal, right? You signed a record deal, but you were signing away your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For real. To, and I'm not disparaging any race or religion, but they're basically Jewish people own that. So you're signing away to this guy. And, and, and he's like, okay, well, but you're going to be in the studio tomorrow, all day, for a month. I don't care if it's your birthday. I don't care if your mom dies. You're going to be in the studio. You know, we don't like these songs. We want you to play this song. Well, I don't care if you don't like this song. As a matter of fact, we already recorded it with somebody else. We just need you to stand for the picture. And this is the song that's going to be on the album. I don't care if you don't like it on the album. It's gonna be on the album. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's our first single. Damn, they just I don't fucking give a rub damn it in and shit. If you don't like the right. song, you're they gonna sing it every predict night. Predict everything. Yeah. You're gonna. This is you, and this is the picture, and this is what we're gonna do with you, and this is the video we're gonna do. And you just gotta go and, do and it. And tomorrow, this tour starts. I don't give a damn. I don't care. Your mom died. I don't care. Go. You're on tour. It's millions of dollars at stake. Right. It's bigger than you. For the rest of no, no eighteen months. No, not not a week. Eighteen months. <laughs> That's like, that's like these are drug addicts. They're right. drunk. Yeah. Well, that's they how they get no through control it. Out. Shit, like, yeah. like, you know, all of them, they have to go through, uh, like the dude from the Stone Temple Pilots, you know? Oh, yeah, that was sad. There's so many of them just like that. And it's just like, bam, bam. And then you get caught in it, and then you don't know any different thing in your life. Right. And then it's like, it's pretty good money. It's freedom. But you have no, you have no control. You have, I'm very few people have. Even the ones that have control don't have control. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. And that's, you're kind of just showing like the dark side of the, the industry. You know, that's reality. everybody sees like, you know, the glitz and the glam, the rock star life. all the blinky lights. The money, the nice yeah. cars, the I mean, fame. They're only going to show the nice stuff. <laughs> the beautiful women, the sex, all that is glorified and stuff. Yeah, like, but, yeah. you know, that movie, The Dirt, Motley Crue just right. came out with. I was there and that when all that shit happened. I mean, I was selling boots and I remember all those stories, like all those stories. I, mm-hmm. I, I heard them firsthand from, right. from the, from, Dude, uh, that is crazy. You know, all them yeah. from Vince Neil and all that. I remember we were, we were at the rehearsal for Dr. Feelgood, and it was in um, Studio City. And uh, so um, sitting there, and, and um, then afterwards they all come out, and like Vince, he had just got married. He was talking about, he was just in Houston, and it was with some chick, and she called him, and his wife heard it, and just stuff like that. You know, their lives are just a total wreck right. the whole time, all the time. All of them, everybody. And nobody cares because the industry is just like, we want you to be this fun David. You got to be David Lee like Roth. Be David Lee Roth. Be David Lee Roth. Everybody be David Lee Roth. Yeah, it's a party all day long. Let's sell it. And teenagers across America were like, oh, it's so lucky. I want to be that. You know what I mean? We didn't know. Yeah. I still want to be that. I would still do that. You know what I mean? In the back of my brain. I would still be David Lee Roth. Yeah. If somebody said you could be David Lee Roth, I'd be like, "Fuck yeah, I'm down. I'm I did. I'll mean, sign up for it tomorrow. Uh, yeah. and shit. Sign me up, coach. <laughs> Dude, what, what, what? Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but dude. obviously I wouldn't because I didn't make that choice to be David Lee Roth. Not that I could have, but you know what I'm saying? Right, right. You chose a different path. You yeah, know what I, I mean? Yeah. yeah, it's crazy, man. Your story is absolutely nuts. Uh, what the experiences you've had, everything that you've gone through, uh, the name you made for yourself and your brand and the band. Um, it's it's crazy. It's good to see. And like, I'm really happy we got to talk to you today. Misa, give him a round of applause. Yeah, dude, definitely. And, I mean, and even the stuff that he's doing now, you know, getting into comedy. It's, uh, I'll just say, ask Kissery, he'll get you guys nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. So yeah, you'll never know if you don't fuck around, dude. <laughs> All right. So what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna get ready to wrap up the podcast here. We're at forty-two minutes on the second half, so wow, the time really. Bo- yeah, dude, that shit flew by. Wait, I got so ten more stories. I got seventeen <laughs> jokes to tell. <laughs> He's like, I didn't get through my whole set, bro. Uh, <laughs> okay. So what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna go around the studio, give our final thoughts on today's episode. We we'll start with you, Amanda. Final thoughts today? No, thanks for having me here and meeting you today. It was a lot of fun and all those stories it's like just a really cool experience that you've had so thanks for joining us thanks, today. Man. that was fun wow. sorry i was mid-drink jesus christ <laughs> wow. wow almost had a stroke right there wow. uh, misa final thoughts on today's yeah, episode yeah right? I, I gotta say um it, it's it's an honor having you here <sighs> because uh i mean just to say just to say we had the lead singer of uh 
Funky Mongo. He said um, it right. So many people are going to be like, no way. Uh, especially like the old folks out there that are listening, my parents right. and stuff like that. He's but, like, are you guys uh, curse a lot? But, I can't listen <laughs> to that. No. Nah, nah. They, the thing is, is like, they're going to they're gonna be like, well, so if true. he cusses, I guess it's okay. He <laughs> did go to cathedral for a month. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the St. Joseph reply. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for your time, man. I think your story Thanks, is man. great. Oh, uh, so I wish you much of luck and uh and, and your future and what you're doing uh hopefully uh hopefully we, we get to see them live maybe we'll, we'll get chris up there to sing up there with yeah. you <laughs> he used to be a rapper so he's not he's ooh, not scared ooh, ooh. of being on I stage can, i can grace the stage you yeah. know sweet man but good stuff chris just uh shout out to our boy chewy from uh next gen sports uh everybody watching chewy, and listening chewy, chewy. Thank you, guys. You guys make sure to stay safe and stay fresh. <laughs> All right, Mr. Joey. Final thoughts on today's episode? Me. Oh, this is my story. Take my, me to your leader. This is tell my kids in college, uh, <laughs> run fast and win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I just thought it was so funny. I, I looked over there. This is what you're doing. It's like, no. Just throw it's it like, up. Uh, <laughs> may the may the force be with you. You want to piss off a trekkie? Yeah, may do it the, the force, wrong way. May the force be with you. <laughs> yeah, that shit is funny. Live long and prosper. That's it. That's it. Or you know, that's it. Nanu nanu. You guys <laughs> know what that is? Do you know what that is? No, oh, it is a God. <laughs> I feel like we've done nothing but disappoint them all day. Robin Williams, man. Mark and Mindy. Uh, nana, nana. You guys, uh, you guys. Sorry, man. That's sorry. Right. <laughs> I feel like we let him down so many times. You did. You know who that is? Nope. You know who this is? All day, he's like, I just wasted my fucking time yeah. today. Uh, the generational heard? gap is real, guys. Yeah, he's like, these guys must Reagan? listen to Bad Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We used to shoot Bad uh, That shit's funny. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Thanks, Joey. Man. We Thanks really do you guys are great. It. That shit was hilarious. Uh, you have, like Misa said, you got a great story. It's a fantastic career that you built out here in the city of El Paso. Uh, you have a lot of people that are supporting you. It's really good to see that you guys are still going at it ever since 1996. That really is an inspiration. Um, but yeah, thank you one more time for being here today. Give him a round of applause. Yeah. So, you have an open door policy on the podcast anytime you want to come back awesome. shoot the shit with us drink some dos equis tomorrow maybe, bro maybe hit a cayman island if you want you know so but yeah thank you for, for being here one more time um amanda thank you for stepping in and as a, the producer misa once again good shit uh chewy thank you for showing up and drinking those cayman islands game on uh, and uh yeah guys for for everyone supporting everyone who's like subscribes Thank you guys. Episode 163, conversing with Chris and me to the podcast. We are out. Hey, shout out to Iggy. But the police don't know that Middle fingers up Cause we got the whole world, man Never gave a fuck Cause they said that we won't last Trying to live life like a rock star, baby Trying to drift off in a sports car, maybe If I do the dash, hope I don't crash, baby Yeah, I make the money, but the money don't make me